Good evening, SBCUSD community. We are so excited to be with you this evening for our virtual town hall. Our topic tonight will be distance learning and we just wanna express our deep gratitude for all of the families who are joining us this evening um, for what will be an opportunity for you to hear a little bit of information from all of our, or from several of our district leaders and um, have opportunity for Q&A. The bulk of our time tonight will be spent on the Q&A. So I um, just wanna share that information up front. We'll have about 25, 30 minutes of um, some information being shared with all of you. And then we will get into that live interaction where you're able to ask questions and we will be responding live. Um, before I turn it over to Dr. Volkomer for uh, some opening comments, I wanna just draw your attention to the slide that you see on your screen. If you are in need of interpretation services, it's, it's there in Spanish for you um, to outline the steps that you would need to take. Um, and before I turn it over to Dr. Volcom, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Lorraine Perez and I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Volcom. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for being here and happy 14th day of school. Uh, it's, uh, I can't believe we're almost three weeks down now. Uh, it was a very, very busy summer, as you know, a very eventful spring, a very busy summer. And uh, we've worked very hard to um, bring uh, to you a new and improved distance learning, what we call distance learning 2.0 uh, program. I wanna thank our team and the many, many people that have been involved in uh, putting that together. Uh, they worked very, very, very hard all through the summer. And we know it's not perfect, uh, but we're learning every day. We're working to get better every day. And we know, and it's not lost on us, that COVID-19 and, and particularly the, 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 the resultant decision to stay in distance learning uh, adds a, a different dynamic for all of our families. Uh, you, uh, in society, we count on students going to school during the day. And now they're staying home during the day and having school there. And we know that that puts extra pressures and extra considerations on you. Uh, many, many different uh, challenges that you're facing as families. And so we want to be very responsive uh, to our community. And to do that, we have to be good listeners. And that's our objective this evening. We had a town hall meeting this morning, uh, actually this afternoon from 12 to 2. It went extremely well. Uh, the questions were wonderful. Our team did a wonderful job of listening and comforting and supporting and giving information. And that's what we want to do again tonight. We want to listen. We want to learn. We want to understand what you're actually experiencing uh, because as we design it, we know it takes on one form, but then as it goes out into what we call the field, which means how you experience it, is, is the reality that we have to be aware of. And so we want to listen, learn, and understand, and then we want to move to adjust as best we can to make it great for you and, and most importantly, make it great uh, for our terrific students. So again, I want to thank our team for uh, being here this evening. Uh, they're here very knowledgeable uh, and very prepared to answer all of your questions. I want to thank you again for being with us this evening, uh, sharing your expertise, your experiences, your thoughts, and your ideas and investing in this process with us. We're going to get through this um, and we're actually going to be better for it. And we're going to continue to work and strive, uh, give each other grace and patience as we work to really do something spectacular for, a kid, for our kids. I'm looking forward to a great school year. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this evening, hearing what you have to say, the questions you have, what you have to share. Uh, and we just appreciate you being here. So Dr. Perez, thank you very much for giving me a couple of minutes to share. Thank you, Dr. Volkmer. And so with that, we have um, our, our board president, Ms. Gwendolyn Rogers, who will be sharing a few words with us as well this evening. Thank you. Thank you again. And good evening to everyone. And this again, I want to just uh, commend the team um, from this morning. The parents and the staff did a great job. So again, I'm looking. I'm looking at the participants. The number is growing. They had over a hundred participants this afternoon and filled with questions of things that I know that you've been anticipating being answered. And that's what we're here for tonight. We're so glad that the board again took the liberty to say again, we want to hear from you all and they put it together in record time. And we're just glad to be able to be here to answer the questions that you have because you are important to us as well as your students. 
We're in this together. So as we work it together, we need to know what's going on out there. We know there's a lot of stress. We know there's a lot of anxiety and we're right there with you every step of the way and whatever it takes is what we're willing to do to hear your questions and answers. So as Dr. Bokumer said, we will get better. And so I also wanna say um, to you, just hang in there, it's gonna be okay and we will get better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. And I do see a couple of uh, other board members with us this evening. I believe that Dr. Wyatt is with us. Dr. Wyatt. Good evening, everyone. Great to see everyone. Um, hi, guys. Mike's here, too. Um, hi, Mr. Gallo. How are you guys? We're all excited to, to be together this evening. And, I believe and to get the show on it and to get go. the show on the road. I want to say good evening and it's so good to be here and ditto everything that our president said. Thank you. Thank you. We're so um, excited to have you all with us this evening. Um, if you'll advance, oh, actually, you know what? Stay right there. Don't don't advance the slide. Um, th we thank our board for being with us tonight, and um, and also importantly for all of our families making the time to be with us this evening. I want to um, just make mention that there are two ways that this meeting is being is taking place. The first is actually via a Zoom, um, and. If you have live questions that you want to have answered, you will need to be part of that Zoom meeting. Right now we have 96 participants in the Zoom meeting. This is the, the platform that will allow you to actually ask the questions live with your own voice and allow for our team to also answer back those questions live. Um, there's also another way to just view the meeting and that is via our YouTube um, channel or um, link that you see down at the bottom of this slide. If you are watching on YouTube, you will not have the capability to ask um, your questions live. I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that. But if you are comfortable just watching and you kind of just wanna uh, take in all of the information and hear other people's questions and hear them get answered, please feel free to continue to watch that way. Um, but if you are interested in asking a question, please know that you do have to uh, jump into the Zoom meeting. So with that, we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Thank you. So tonight, um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the meeting, we're going to spend a little bit of time sharing really critical information with parents related to distance learning. And you will see a host of um, uh, directors who oversee departments um, in our in our district office who will provide information for you and we set it up this way I promise they will be very succinct they did a very nice job in the in the uh, earlier session of getting just the most salient points and really important information out to families um, but we felt that that was important so that in that process some of your questions could potentially be answered and then we will open it up for the the majority of the meeting to be really an opportunity for us to hear from parents about your experiences, what's working, what's not working, and ask any questions that you may have. Um, we, we, as Dr. Volkmer mentioned, and I believe uh, Ms. Gwendolyn Rogers as well, we had a really nice um, session in the afternoon where folks were asking some great questions, and we know that will be the same tonight. Um, so please, you know, just feel free to take in the information and any question that does not get answered, we, we will be happy to um, stick with it and answer all of those questions. So with that, we're gonna get into the presentation. Um, and like I said, there will be a host of a variety of directors who will introduce themselves, let you know what departments they're from and share a little bit of information with you. Dr. Perez? Yes. Hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I just wanna make sure we make the an announcement for interpretation before we keep going. You're right. Please. <laughs> um, I'm just going to um, tell our Spanish speakers um, are the steps to log on for Spanish interpretation. 
Muy buenas tardes. Muchas gracias que um, vinieron a esta junta con nosotros. Solamente le queremos decir que si ocupa interpretación en español, por favor, sigue los pasos en la pantalla ahorita. Solamente va a bajar a la pantalla y va a seleccionar clic al um, globo que dice Interpretation. De allí va a escoger su idioma que va a ser Spanish para español. Y quiero asegurar que también selecciona Mute Original Audio. Y con esos pasos van a poder recibir esa interpretación en español. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Thank you. That's a critical piece. <laughs> so I believe that uh, Tasha Guaizan will be opening up with our very first informational slide. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Tasha Dwizon, and I currently serve as the director for elementary instruction. Today, I wanna to set the stage for learning experiences for distance learning 2.0 that you can expect for your children. You can expect lessons and teaching that are planned out and purposeful and aligned to our state standards to meet the needs of all so that we cover all of the essential standards by the end of the year. This is for all students, regardless of program, which includes our English learners, special education, elementary and secondary students. You should have picked up learning materials such as workbooks and supplies for your child to write and practice what they are learning in class. Each school has a support plan and teachers are assessing students as we speak so that they can take the best path to provide that extra support and also accelerate their learning. You should expect ongoing feedback and communication from your child's teacher. Student work matters and grades will be given. You should expect that every day your child has live interaction time with their teachers for the minutes listed here on the screen, which is typically broken up over the course of the day to allow for teaching, then practice and some more teaching. Additionally, music PE will be continued to be offered to your children. And we have an electronic digital library available for all students in which every student has access to pick online for reading and for research. We continue to offer professional development for best practices for all of our teachers that are geared specifically to their grade level. At this time, we can advance the slide. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Suda Venkatesan. I'm the director for secondary education. All the information that Ms. Doizon mentioned apply to the secondary students too. Additionally, though we are in the distance learning, a through G is a priority for all our students. So A through G requirements have not changed. The hold harmless provision does not apply for this school year anymore. So if the students don't complete their assignments or miss them, their grade could be negatively impacted. A grade of C or better is required for a successful completion of A through G course. So we plead and strongly urge every student and parent to check with the counselor if they are on track for A through G completion. If a student requires to recover credit, again, the student has to reach out the, to the counselor to get them scheduled into those classes in order to make up the credits. And I again urge your students to be very proactive about this. Let's not wait till the 12th grade because then it becomes little too much to make up all those credits. The longer you wait, the more difficult it does become. When we offer credit recovery, we are making sure that we offer credit recovery through summer schools and through after school classes. And it is for uh, English learners as well as for special education students. And all the student groups have access to the secondary programs. When the students are new into the high school, the supplemental English language development is actually being done by offering extra ELD coursework. They are first um, placed in the main programs and beyond that they are offered supportive classes. 
So with that, uh, as um, Ms. Doizon said, please make use of the electronic resources that are also on our website. Thank you very much. And next slide, please. Ms. Dr. Lundy. Should we move to the next so that we can get back to the slide? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was on mute. I apologize. I was just talking. Good evening, parents. Off mute. I'm Dr. Lundy, the director for special education. And just like my previous directors, um, the previous director stated, our special education students are general education students first. And they have access to all of the resources that are available to all students. Um, just a, a, an additional layer because there are some legal requirements as it relates to special education. If your child happens to be mod severe, they have access to the functional academics with the goal of self-sufficiency within, within the home. So part of the, the supports are where the teachers are meeting regularly to make sure that your students' needs are being met. We're currently working on providing sensory kits um, with additional resources that we're going to send home to parents. If your child is a mild to moderate student or is receiving RSP services, our focus really should be on access. We really want them to be included within the general education curriculum and making sure that they have supports in order to meet this effectively. Certain products we've purchased such as Don Johnson, Let's Go Work, Learn, WonderWorks, and other personalized products that will help your students with this. So our teachers have been trained and we will have a series of trainings for our parents as well if you would like more information on how these tools can help your child at home. And finally, speech and language and other related services should resume this week. Therefore, if your child has those items on their IEP, we have purchased Presence Learning so that that's HIPAA compliant, so your students can receive their services online. So as of now, those services should have begun. Your service provider should have already contacted you, and you should be seeing the wonderful services that your students should be receiving per their IEP as of today. Thank you very much. Oh, slide, sorry, continue slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. Once again, I just wanted to reiterate that we're sending home sensory kits. So parents, look out for these kits to come home in the mail. We've collaborated with your teachers to understand what are the different supplies that your students would need, especially in the mod severe classroom that will help them with the transition from working from school to home. The other things, if your, your child are in the other, other sections of, of special education, they also will be receiving materials home as well, but we're doing it starting with the, the most vulnerable population first. And further, all IEP meetings will resume on August 14th, which is Monday. So if you have any questions, concerns, or things that you want to talk about in relationship to your IEP, please contact your school administrator and you can set up an IEP meeting. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Anna Applegate and I'm the director of the Multilingual Programs Department. And I think by now you're seeing a theme going on here that all of our kids are all of our kids, regardless of placement or subgroup. So having said that, my, my directors that just presented told you that our English learners are included in everything we do and they are at all levels. But on top of that, I also wanted to assure our community, the state has asked us to really focus on providing access to academics for our English learners and also to continue the focus on English language development. Because as we know, we need to make sure that our English learners um, gain English proficiency as quickly as possible. So on top of everything else they just mentioned, for our English learners, we also have uh, EL specific supports in everything that is given to teachers, including the TEs, including the curriculum guides, all the resources they have, have specific EL supports in them. We've also invested in some differentiated digital curriculum for our English learners to make sure that those students who may not speak English that well have opportunities in their languages to be able to catch up or to, or to make sure that they have access to the work. Um, we also have additional personnel that we're assigning to our English learners. Every school site has what we call an English learner facilitator. And that's the point person at that school to make sure that everything I'm talking to you about tonight is implemented at that site. And they're the direct liaison with our department to make sure that our English learner needs are being met. 
We also have educational assistance that give um, assistance to our families who don't speak Spanish or other languages as well, like Vietnamese, um, Arabic. We have several that uh, we can assist with. And we also have interns that are coming back, college interns to help tutor our kids as well. And just also to let you know that we continue progress monitoring. We know that you're aware that state exams are not being given right now or they're being postponed, but it's really important that we continue to monitor our English learners to make sure that they're making academic growth and language growth, growth in their language levels. So teachers do have digital English learner portfolios where they can continue to track the progress of their English learners. We did also purchase an additional assessment that is given online, the test of English language learning. And all these tools are available now. And I just wanted to assure you that all programs and services that we have been given our English learners are still available in distance learning. However, with just a little bit differentiated supports. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Will Greer. I'm the Director of Equity and Targeted Student Achievement. Very glad to be with you this evening. I think I speak for all my colleagues when I say we are honored and humbled to serve the children and family of San Bernardino. We do not take it lightly. Very honored to do it. So the Department of Equity and Targeted Student Achievement is still focused on improving outcomes for African American students by working with our leaders and teachers. We're still guided by the Improvement Plan for African American Student Achievement, which seeks to improve outcomes for African American students in third grade reading, math in grades four, five, eight, and nine, high school success, especially in integrated math one, access and success and honors, advanced placement, international baccalaureate courses, and of course, family engagement. And we are planning some very powerful and exciting events for our parents and community. Um, our DAC and community engagement schedules will be available soon. Shout out to any of our DAC parents, um, DAC officers who might be participating. Um, in our office, the, the ETSA office, we've hired a new secretary as well as a math equity program specialist who will work directly with teachers and leaders on the mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, and teaching practices that have been shown to increase black student success in math. So we're very excited about that. And lastly, we're creating some exciting professional development for our teachers and leading and leaders, excuse me. Our trainings are addressing complex issues of race, racism, trauma, wellness, brain-based learning, African and African-American history, and the specific practices and dispositions that support increased achievement for African-American students. We hope to hear from you and see you at one of our DAC or community events. Thank you very much. Um, and if we can please kick it over, I believe we have Mike from IT up next. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Greer. Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Tu, and I am the Director of Information Technology. Um, I am here today to share with you updates on our devices and connectivity for our students as we start the school year with distance learning. Um, the technology department has have been distributing and exchanging devices and hotspots to our students throughout the summer. Over the last three weeks, 9,300 devices and 2,600 hotspots were distributed or swapped. Uh, in total, the district has um, handed out over 35,000 devices and 13,000 hotspots to our SBCSD students. Um, any students who have requested a device or hotspots have been able to get one by appointment, either by going through their schools or calling Cybertech at 866-223-8685. And additionally, any students with a non-working device or hotspots have been able to exchange it for a working one via an appointment as well. Um, the hotspots that are being uh, distributed to our students are using the latest uh, 4G LTE technology from Verizon and T-Mobile. In working with the uh, various uh, wireless uh, carriers, it was determined that Verizon and T-Mobile have good network coverage for the San Bernardino area. Uh, there are a number of factors though that can affect connectivity and our team is working with any families to address concerns that arise uh, for, with regards to connectivity. However, similar to cell phones, hotspot service is dependent on weather, terrain, network load, proximity to cell phone towers, and other factors uh, that are both tangible and intangible. Um, so the district continues to leverage E-rate funding to um, continue to meet the needs of the increasing demand for bandwidth. I know that we will continue to work and hold discussions with our different service providers, state and federal agencies, to find other innovative solutions to close the technology gap for our students. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marlene Vikendova. I'm the Director of Positive Youth Development. 
We want to really let you know that um, students are marked presence, present when they participate every day. So we want you to keep in mind that it is very important that students log in and participate with their teachers every single day. Uh, some t parents have asked, you know, can my child do all of his work on Thursday and get credit for being a uh, present Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? So um, the answer is no. We absolutely need kids to participate every single day. So please make sure they're logging in Monday through Friday and that way we can mark them present and we want to make sure that they participate so that they can better be able to understand the material, master the standards, and eventually graduate. If your child is sick, because we know that is going to happen from time to time, if they have an illness, you have five days to submit excusals, just an excuse of absence, just as you used to do during the regular school year. You can do this by calling the school, um, just letting them know what happened, and we can work on the excusal for you. Again, you have five days to submit those. If you are having a technical issue, we know that <clears throat> there have been a number of times where parents could not get logged in. Sometimes we have a power outage. If this happens, you're going to communicate with your child's uh, teacher and or the school as soon as possible. What, if you have a power outage and it is all day long, we will work on that absence for you. If you are um, have a power outage for a few hours, as soon as possible, you want your child online and working on the asynchronous work as much as possible. Those are the basics of attendance. We just wanna make sure that you're aware. Again, we hope to see your children every single day online and participating. Thank you so much. Next slide. Good evening. My name is Leonard Buckner and I'm the Assistant Director of Enrollment and Placement Services. And we are here to meet all your enrollment and placement needs from TK through 12. Other areas that we provide service in are elementary lottery and magnet programs, school transfers, and student records. So if you have any questions or need support, please call Enrollment and Placement Services. Next slide. Good evening, my name is Latasha Kelly. I am the director for the Child Development Program. The Child Development Program is currently enrolling children from birth to five and is conducting virtual learning. All students will receive materials and workbooks. Thank you. Next slide, please. Good evening, Colleen Williams, Director of Student Wellness and Support Services. Um, also happy to be with you this evening and similarly to the message from our educational services directors, all of our students, all of your students are our students. And so um, the work here that you see is inclusive, all of our students. So we've been putting in additional supports for social, emotional, behavioral needs for our children um, since going to stay at home orders. We have virtual classroom, social, emotional learning supports where our students are participating in coping strategies and breathing techniques, as well as community building within their classrooms with their teachers and their colleagues and peers. Um, we have additional counselor supports and our counselors have all developed their own Google Classrooms um, with their caseload of students. So they're able to access their counselor just like they would access their teacher. And you definitely have the ability to access their counselor as well. So should they need additional supports in social emotional learning and or academic support and college and career planning that their counselors are still available for them and and um, looking for them to reach out as well as them reaching out to the students individually. And then we've done um, many layers of support for physical and mental health services and um, making sure that we have a referral process should students need some intense support or feeling um, depressed or anxious uh, around their current situation being at home full time. Next slide. Thank you. So here's just a snippet of um, some of those physical mental health supports that we talked about um, is for our physical health. We have some great partners 
um, with IEHP. Um, they have a navigator program where um, we can refer to them um, at your permission and they will reach out to you and, and um, address the needs of the family as a whole. So if you're looking for supports with clothing and food or um, mental and physical health, they have those supports for us. And just a, an extra plug there to say, um, you know, work on getting those immunizations up to date and ready to go and those first grade physicals done, even though we're in stay at home orders so that your students are prepared when we come back as well. Um, and then Hazel Health is a service that we've had in district at, our, at some of our schools. And Hazel Health at Home is the program that we currently are using where you can access a medical provider um, right there from any device that you're probably currently watching us on tonight, whether it's your cell phone or your laptop. Um, and so you have access to those folks um, for all students ages four and up within the San Bernardino City School District. And then mental health services and supports. We have our in-district heart team that provides mental health therapy from our um, student wellness department, as well as our partners at Victor Community Support Services, uh, the Department of Behavioral Health from the county. And then one of our newest partners is Uplift Family Services. All of those mental health services are available to our students. Um, just need to reach out to your school counselor and they can uh, submit the referral process and get that going should you need it. Thank you so much. And I am going to pass it to Mr. Warman. Good evening, everyone. This is Dennis Warman, Director of CAPS Expanded Distance Learning. And CAPS will return on August 31st in a virtual world. And our elementary programs are going to run from 3.30 to 6 p.m. Our middle schools from 2.30 to 6 p.m. And our high schools also 2.30 to 6 p.m. We're going to offer uh, this uh, all of our services through Zoom and Google Classroom. We're going to provide homework and tutoring, our academics, which includes both our environmental, our engineering, our coding, and animatronics. Uh, we're going to have physical activities as well, and recreational activities, and enrichment activities, and including our both our uh, visual and performing arts and our drama programs. And we're also going to reach out to and offer to all students uh, preschool through uh, eighth grade the Clever Crazes program, where students can uh, enrich their academics and has some fun with some um, video type games that also the students can win and earn uh, points to get Walmart gift cards, uh, athletic shoes, backpacks, and uh, books as well. And uh, we'll start on August 31st and we're also going to open up to uh, reach out to all students in the, in the district. So all students, whether they've been in CAPS before or not, they'll be able to access uh, the, um, the youth leaders and the site leads of each program and get that help they need for homework and for tutoring. Next slide. Good evening, families um, and everyone that's here. We're just very thankful to, to be present um, today just to support our families and, and just wanted to thank everybody that's here. The main goal is to support our families. And so it's amazing to see how many people are just getting together to do that. So we're here to support our families during distance learning by providing various virtual workshops, trainings. As you can see on the left, we have workshops to support with college and career readiness. We have health and nutrition classes, mental health classes as well. But the majority of our efforts have been focused on supporting parents with the ARIES Parent Portal and with Google. So any questions, anything that, any support that you need, we're here for you. Um, we literally walk parents every step of the way. So just our number is located on the top. If it says it's 909-880-4057 and it's right above the resources, but I can put it in the chat to support you. But on the right hand side, it says we have a list of resources as well, ranging from distance learning, like I just mentioned. We have everything, we, if you just wanna Go ahead and if you just need support with Google, we have different um, pamphlets, different videos that you can watch, anything at your fingertips. So we also have support with childcare, there's food and rental support. All of this is accessible in our calendar and what we're encouraging parents to do is to go into our San Bernardino City Unified School District homepage and to click on the parent icon or parent tab, and it'll take you directly to all these amazing resources. We just wanted to keep everything simple for you. We know 
that there's a lot going on. And um, again, these resources are, are at your fingertips. We're here to support you with whatever you need. We wanna make sure that your students are successful with distance learning. And like I said before, for additional assistance or additional support, feel free to call us. Our number is up there and I'll put it in the chat again, 880-4057. And we have several life people answering our phone to make sure that we're meeting the needs for our parents. So with that, um, thank you team for getting through that information and, and families, I know that that was a lot of information and by no means do we expect you to have absorbed all of that. It was, it was a lot even for, you know, those of us who um, heard it even earlier today. <laughs> so we're going to have this um, presentation stored on the family engagement webpage so that you can access it and excuse me, have reminders about any information that you may have missed or just need a little more, um, you know, time to, to process and, and uh, think about. So um, with that, we are going to move into the, the Q&A portion of our time together, which is how we'll spend the rest of our time together this evening. But before we do, I want to introduce a couple of people who probably will be chiming in to provide answers and I just don't want them to do that without an introduction so everyone knows who's here and we can begin to build relationships and um, put names with faces um, as you interact with us who provide support at the district office. So um, if Dr. Monares is on the call, which I believe I saw her, if you'll unmute and say hello to everyone. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Good evening, um, parents and community members. Thank you for being here. I'm Rachel Monadis, Assistant Superintendent of Continuous Improvement. I'm so happy to see so many um, participants on this in this meeting. Um, I hope you're staying safe, trying to stay cool, and please be sure that you're um, hugging your children for us because we miss them greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe that Dr. Rodriguez is here. If you are, please unmute and share your greeting. Hi, everyone. My name is Sandra Rodriguez. I'm the new Assistant Superintendent of Student Services. Um, very, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. We never thought that we would start the school year like this. Um, and we do, we miss your, your, your children greatly. And we look forward to the day when they can all come back and, and we can have some normalcy. We, we really appreciate your patience, your grace, as we're working through many of these issues. Um, and, and we know that for you it's difficult and for us to be able to navigate uh, education for over 47,000 students. Um, we just really appreciate your, your patience as we go through this. So thank you very much for spending your evening with us. We have about 152 participants, which is just a blessing. So thank you very much. Uh, muchas gracias a los padres que han venido hoy. Tenemos más de 120, uh, 52 personas que están aquí con nosotros. Esperamos que muy pronto podemos estar juntos. Y este, les extra extrañamos mucho a sus hijos y a ustedes también. Y, y ojalá muy rápido vamos a poder estar juntos. Muchas gracias por su participación. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Dr. Funches. Yes, good evening, everyone. This is Marcus Funches. I am the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. And like my colleague stated, I am glad to be here with you this evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I wanted to let you know that your voice does matter. Your perspectives matter. Your ideas matter. Uh, and the things that you have to share, your thoughts, they do matter to us because we're all in this together um, and we'll get through it together. Uh, whatever happens, we do it together. And so thank you for joining us, giving your, us your thoughts, your perspectives, your ideas, and, and, and helping us with our decision making. And we'll get through this together and we'll get better together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ginger Ontiveros, Ms. Ontiveros. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, so my name is Ginger Ontiveros. I am the Executive Director of Community Engagement and Communications for the school district. So um, our department uh, works to help make sure that all of the information you need is shared out in as many different ways as possible so that you can receive the answers um, and information that you need in order to best um, guide your students through this. 
Uh, we certainly hope and look forward to your input about how we can make how we can do a better job of getting information out to you. And I look forward to your comments, your questions, your suggestions, because they will help us to be better. And as Dr. Funches says, we're in this together and we're looking forward to a great school year. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Christakos. Good evening, everyone. It's so glad. I'm so glad to see all your faces. I can't wait till we can all be together again. I'm the Associate Superintendent of Business Services. So uh, we work really hard to ensure your students have the technology they need, that our maintenance and operations ensures that our, our schools are clean and sanitized and prepared for when your students come back as well as our safety, um, and you'll probably hear from our safety officer later today, ensuring that we do everything we can to um, be prepared for when your students return. Um, have a great evening. Actually, we're gonna ask Eric um, to be up next. I think I saw, I'm trying to scan the room and see if who's with us. Mr. Hey. Vatier, are you? I am. There you are. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Perez. Good evening, families. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We we know uh, you're, you're very busy and we, we appreciate you taking your time out uh, to be here with us. My name is Eric Gutier. I'm the safety officer for the school district and I have the pleasure under the direction of cabinet of leading a team uh, of folks that are working hard to make sure that our schools are physically ready when it's time to return and also uh, ensuring the policies and procedures and plans uh, align with our Department of Public Health and that we're going to be safe when it's time to return. So good evening and look forward to your questions. Thank you. And I'm not sure if uh, I was again searching the room to see if I see Chief Paulino. Chief, are you with us this evening? I'm not hearing a response. Um, so I, I wanted to just ha take the opportunity to have all of those folks introduce themselves. They may at um, some points pop in to answer some of the questions that are asked um, by our families and community. Um, and the, the rest of this time really is dedicated to that. Um, before we get started, you know, I want you to see there's a whole host of folks here to support you. We, it, we are committed to this. We're going to stay and answer questions um, until we, you know, we get through all of the questions. Um, and please know that this is not the last time that you'll have interaction with us. We're committed to continue to um, be open to that two-way communication. It's critical for us to continue to hear um, the things that are working and the things that are not working. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the team who will uh, lead us through the Q&A portion of this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perez. So um, right now we want you to go ahead and raise your hand or you can um, raise your hand yourself. There's a feature on the reactions bottom of your menu and we will be answering questions and you can unmute yourself if you'd like to speak. I have Angel H with their hand raised first. Angel. Selena, can I interrupt? We also need to make sure that they know that they can ask questions in the chat and um, in English or in Spanish, we have someone that's gonna translate those questions as well. So raising the, the hand is a way to ask a question, but then also the chat is another one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know I'm first, but can you please give me a, a couple minutes and maybe let somebody else go? Of and course. I, I, then, then I'll ask my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen West, would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself? Sure. Um, thank you so much for having this meeting. I really appreciate it. I was just wondering if you could expand on how best to communicate with teachers. Um, I did email all of my daughter's teachers, but not everybody responded to email. And I just wondered what we do. I don't want to call the school because I'm sure they're bombarded with calls, but I just don't know how to best, you know, establish that communication. Seems like it takes a long time to get back from a teacher. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm going to ask that either um, Michelle Cleveland or Mike to share some information around um, Remind and, and that system, please. Sure, Dr. Perez. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Cleveland. I am the new director for accountability and ed tech. 
Um, I'm going to provide you a little update around a new application that our teachers are going to be using uh, starting on Monday. It is the Remind app. Some of your school sites may already use this as a communication tool with our sites and our parents. However, there we purchased the um, premium plan and it is going to allow our teachers to have two-way voice communication similar to Google Voice uh, oh, yeah. with you. So okay. you'll actually be able to contact them uh, via phone through using the Remind app. It does not require you to download an app to your phone. It actually just uses the contact information that we have currently for you in Aries um, for the teachers to extend messages and reach out to you. And so we're hoping that that gives our staff an opportunity to have more avenues to reach out and make connections uh, with our parents. Thank you so much. Angel, are you ready to ask, ask your question? Um, <clears throat> yeah, my, I have a question. Okay, um, my, my, both of my kids, I have, have, I have a sixth grader and a um, four, third grader, <laughs> sorry. And, um, the, you know, it's, I mean, the distant learning has been very beneficial just for them to see the other students in class or whatnot. Um, I mean, it's a total difference, you know, from the summer or whatnot and just being isolated. Um, and so uh, what I wanted to ask was um, if they were, you know, maybe you guys can try to consider implementing like some type of virtual recess where just like when they're at school, the kids can kind of like chat amongst themselves, um, you know, at some point in time during their, uh, their, their, their meet or whatnot. Um, so, you know, in, in maybe for 10 or 15 minutes or something, because, uh, um, you know, when they do get to do it, when they're allowed by their teacher, um, you know, I, uh, it's to them, you know, to them, it's like they're, you know, I guess they're PE or whatnot. And, and uh, considering the circumstances, I just think that, that that could be, I mean, that that would be very beneficial. For uh, what's that? For socialization. Uh, you know, for socialization. And, um, what's that? Did you get, can you guys hear me? I can hear you, Angel. Okay. I'll go ahead and, okay. and respond to that. Um, okay. Um, I think that's a, a fabulous idea, um, and I'm going to pass that along to our school sites. I hear um, are both of your students in elementary? You said third and sixth grade. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I have a third and sixth grader from Bonio. Okay. All right. I will. Um, thank you very much for that suggestion. Um, we love to hear those ideas because that's what will help us to be stronger. So, great idea, and I will pass that along to our sites. Can I can I give you another uh, suggestion? Absolutely, go right ahead. Oh, oh okay. Um, my other suggestion was um, I'm not sure if Mr. Cotter is available or not. I know he's not a teacher and he's the counselor or whatnot. But my children have you know you know we as a family have spoken to him uh, if and when like my kids got in trouble or or there's, you know, been a problem, um, like a, 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 he's a passing of the family or whatnot. And we're comfortable with him. And I wanted to know if he's available or, you know, I, my, I think he should be available, you know, for any concerns um, because my children, I, I, I know, are comfortable in speaking with him, you know, um, from minute stuff to, you know, whatever. And I, I just would, wanted to know if he is available during the meet or at certain times to contact. Hi, Angel. This is Colleen Williams from Student Wellness. I'm going to uh, steal the time from Tasha there um, to say that your, your counselors absolutely are available. We're so glad to hear that your students have a relationship with Mr. Cotter um, and look forward to time with him. I'm going to put my email address um, in the chat. If you can email me your students' names, I will make sure that Mr. Cotter reaches out to you. Um, and they should all be part of his Google Classroom as well. Are they part of your have... Google Classroom? No, no we no. never received any yeah. invitation. Yeah, we, um, okay. my kids, they haven't received an invitation like like for that. And um, and, and so uh, another thing too is uh, um, 
my kids didn't receive any type of workbook or any type of materials. Well, I mean, that's just separate. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's okay. Cause I think we're all taking notes here. So if you send yeah. me your information, I'll share with Miss uh, Doizon as well so that she can okay. work on the workbooks and I can work on the council pieces. Uh, Absolutely. All right. We're a team. We will make sure to get what you need. Well, yeah, I'm just speaking on suggestions. I'm not really, you know, enforcing it or whatnot but i just i'm telling you our, our our view and what we're we're you know how we're approaching it here at home and uh and we you know it. and we yeah we appreciate just the the you know the communication and you know back and forth you know even though it's on a device because you know the circumstances i think it's very beneficial and it's great for the kids and, and they have a totally change of, of attitude after their meet or whatnot well, that's wonderful to hear, and we appreciate the partnership that's happening over there as well, um, and and look forward to more suggestions from you. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, we have a que uh, question in the chat from Zach and Oya. Uh, is tutoring going to be available for students other than EL students? I went ahead and addressed that question, and I did say on there that um, CAPS is going to be offering homework support, so um, not necessarily tutoring. So if that helps, um, that's what I addressed in the question in the chat. If anyone has any other information to support with that, but I know CAPS is going to be open to all students, and one of the suggested workshops or sessions is homework support. And this is Dennis. Um, every school virtually will have a CAPS program, and um, we'll send out emails. So you can log on, and um, and then the site leads from each school can help uh, work with your student and our teacher and the principal to see what they uh, where they need help at. Okay, thank you, Selena. It's um, the okay. your turn, Gary. Why I have you? Yes. Um, I just wanted to start off that I commend, I have a kindergartner and I have a third grader and I commend their school for everything that they're doing and the difficulties of trying to get everything together. These teachers are amazing and I give them all the credit in the world. Um, I know that kids or parents, you probably, if I was in person, would throw rocks at me, but um, the question I have is there has it ever come to mind of suspending school until um, they're able to go into school? Um, because the problem I have, it is very difficult um, as a parent, I am working from home. Um, so I'm not able to, you know, especially with my kindergartner um, who you're having, to, you know, she's in class from 850 all the way to 1150. So having them to concentrate for that long of a period and not having me to have to be able to focus um, is really, really difficult. Um, my third grader, um, he pretty much can take care of his own, but they just, there's so much distractions that my kids are not, a lot of kids who are not used to being at home and doing this distant learning um, that I, I just, I have a feeling that I don't believe they may be learning or taking on um, the education as strongly as they would at school. Um, so I was just kind of curious on if that's ever been, you know, even extending it out to where they go a little bit longer through the summertime, if that's ever been brought up. Dr. Monadis or, or Mr. Vatir, do you want to address the pieces around um, our being at school in the current state? Yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take a crack at that one, and Dr. Monadis can can chime in uh, as well. So the the state actually requires us at this point to be in school. Um, emergencies are declared uh, generally for short periods of time. Now, this is obviously the first pandemic emergency we've ever seen, uh, any of us on this on this phone call that we've ever seen in a, in a school system. Um, so you'll know that uh, when the, the school board made the courageous decision in March to shut the schools down, uh, that was a local decision that we were able to make at that point. 
and the state uh, granted us a waiver um, at that point. And then throughout the summer, the state did say that schools will be required to continue education um, in the formats that they may, which is current, you know, our current condition allows for us to do it in a digital setting. So um, that's the answer I have. Okay, we move to Thank you. I apologize. Esmeralda, do you want to um, read the chat question? Yes. Thank you. I have a comment from Keisha McGee. She says that my son is being marked absent because his fifth period teacher runs over and he gets off to not be late to his sixth period. Can Hong High School needs to fix this issue? Not fair that my student is marked absent and he is in class. Hi, Esmeralda. Yes, I wrote directly to Ms. McGee and I'm gonna help her with her issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Diana? Go ahead and please unmute yourself and ask your question. I have another deposit that the, I, I still have in my possession, sitting in the envelope right in front of me. Uh, okay. Diana, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. My daughter's a student at Cajon thank High you. School, and she's having an issue with teacher response times. So if she has a question in one class and she messages the teacher and she's waiting and she's waiting and she's waiting for this teacher to get back to her um, and she she's feeling like there's there's a gap. Um, she There's not that back and forth learning. And so we're just trying to figure out how um, we can get around that. I know the teachers are trying to take care of so many different students in this, but there's there's got to be you know, a better way. And as far as, you know, getting through all her classes, her teachers have very similar office hours. So if she needs help in one class, then she's missing out on the help that she needs in another class as well. So that's the that's the difficulty that we're having right now. Um, this is uh, Sudha Venkatesan, director from secondary. Um, I'm gonna put my email down and you um, provide me with your um, name and the name of the student, I will make sure I'll get in touch with uh, the principal there to help resolve this issue. Wonderful, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Cepeda family? Hi, um, we were wondering if the standard for passing the grade is going to be the same um, as it would be as if they were in class. And if so, what are the plans to make it happen? Because it doesn't seem that he's getting as much education as he would be. He's not learning the same. There's, there's like a disconnect going on. Suda or Tasha, do you guys want to? Take that one related to grading. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, what what grade is this that you are is speaking about? My son is in second, and my daughter is in kindergarten, well transitional kindergarten. Okay, so I do hear you specifically about um, making sure that uh, your what I understand to hear you saying is that the grade that the grading is going to be the same as if they were in school. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So in um, elementary school, we use what are called standards-based grading. And actually, um, especially for kindergarten and also in second grade, actually all of our grades in elementary, we do a standards-based grading, which is which means it's um, we're looking for the mastery of the standard. So actually we have multiple opportunities and times especially for um, i'm thinking in particular of your um, child who's in kindergarten um, they would have multiple the year really to show that they have mastery of that standard additionally um, so the teacher um, 
will teach, they practice, maybe do some more teaching. Everybody um, kind of breaks up their day a little bit. Differently. And then on top of that, each school will also have a plan in place where there'll be additional supports available for students. So you might have like a teacher will lead a small group and your daughter will be or son will be invited to that small group for additional practice on top of what they're already getting with their teacher. So typically in the first beginning couple weeks of school, um, we do review, we do make sure that kids get acclimated to school. So I would imagine that it picks up um, quite a bit once the kids get acclimated. Um, I wanna put my name in the chat as well. So if you do have further questions, I would be happy to answer them for you. Okay, thank you. I, yes, I do see a um, chat Sorry. question um, by TD Morris. Um, I would like to address that so that all um, you know parents can hear that. The question is just curious as to how the distance learning was developed in the district. I noticed the difference between my children's schedules, one being in high school and the other in middle school. I've also spoken with friends whose children are in the other districts and have continued the full day schedule. So I just wanna quickly give you the update on how this was, um, um, the, the whole uh, distance learning schedule was developed. Um, I'm not touching upon the spring one because it, we were all on an emergency mode, but this uh, the guidance was from SB 98 and uh, each school, uh, middle school, high school, as well as elementary, they have different number of minutes. So we have our starting and the ending time uh, relevant to those different grade levels. And then within that parameter, um, student, um, schools are allowed to create their master schedules in order to meet uh, the different classrooms, especially when you talk about high schools, they have like IB, AP classes in some schools and there's some are on, uh, um, some offer more art classes. So we wanna make sure that we provide that freedom for the schools and the teachers to make the decision. But at the same time, the starting and ending is the same. The live requirement minutes on when the students um, have to have live interaction with the teachers are very similar. Those it, totally based on what the, the state is requiring us to do. So they've all been built into those schedules. I just wanna address that here on how, uh, what were the considerations that were kept in mind when we developed this distance learning for the, um, um, you know, for this fall. I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. We have um, a question on the chat. It's from Merica Delgado. She's asking if it is possible to hold a raffle for a laptop for those students with perfect attendance. This is Marlene. I answered uh, that question already. I just I, I thanked her for the idea. Um, our team is actually helping school sites create different types of incentives for attendance because attendance is so important right now. Um, so thank you for that idea and we will continue to think of other ideas as well to help um, implement for our students. Thank you. Just real quick, I just want to let everybody know, and I just want to thank all the parents for being very patient. There's a lot of parents that have questions, and so we're looking at the chat, and we're also looking to see who's raising their hand. So we are here to answer all your questions, and we just appreciate your patience and your support. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Um, Carolina, I seen she had her hand up. Is she still here? Yeah. Hi, Carolina. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Carolina. Can you I have four kids, one in first, second, sixth, and eighth grade. Um, I would like Carolina, to... perdón por interrumpirla. Ana está aquí y Ana va a traducirles. O si quiere hablar en español, está bien. Sí. Ana, are you here? Tengo, tengo cuatro niños de primero, segundo, sexto y octavo. Y, y veo que los niños, que, eh, los niños chiquitos que aprenden su cámara están más comprometidos a, a tomar las clases. Eh, Yo quiero que, este, como que motiven a los niños más grandecitos para que se prendan su cámara, así como la doctora Suda o Mike que tienen su background, pueden hacer los estudiantes así. Ahorita, desafortunadamente, lo que nos limita es el COVID, pero no tienen por qué esconderse los niños. ¿Hay alguna manera de, de, de 
hacerlos que prendan su cámara para que pongan más atención. A mí me gusta hablar así como de frente, como están viendo, no esconderme. Sí, sí, deje traducir ahorita. Um, okay. Ana, are you, are you translating, Ana Mejía? If not, parents, I'll just go ahead and translate. What she's saying is that she has four children. She has small children that are that she sees are more committed to um, to just paying attention and to just staying focused. And she she's looking for more motivation for the older children. And she's suggesting that they possibly turn on their camera. And she mentioned Ms. Suda, who has a background that maybe they can turn on their background, but just so that they can be more engaged and interactive in their classes. So, ¿Es una sugerencia o es una pregunta? No, es una sugerencia. Okay, ¿Es de alguna manera mandatoria o no? She's asking if it's mandatory, if we can make it mandatory for them to turn on their camera so they can be more engaged, if anyone can respond to that question. Los niños no te tienen que esconder. ¿De qué te esconden? Right. She's saying that students don't need to hide that in order for them to be more engaged and participate that um, you know, a suggestion would be for the camera to be turned down. So now she's asking if we could make it mandatory or if it is mandatory, could it possibly be mandatory? And make a background. And they can use a background. And I know we've talked about that, so I don't know if anyone wants to speak to that. I'll jump in on that one. So, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, thank you uh, for that question and, and your, uh, your perspectives and your thoughts. Uh, we know that's a sensitive uh, subject uh, sensitive top topic. We know that some uh, students may not want to share what's going on behind them. And we know that there are different uh, backgrounds or different things that goes on or that go on in our homes. And so one of your question, can we make that mandatory? Uh, right now, we're just looking into it. Uh, uh, we're trying to look at what's the best way forward where we respect the privacy of our families and our students, while at the same time, uh, looking at how we best engage our scholars in the work. Uh, so uh, point well taken. We are looking at that. We are working on it. Uh, uh, but we want to make sure that we, whatever decisions we make, we want to respect the privacy of our scholars and their families. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, and there'll be some more information out on that soon as we continue to work through that. Thank you. Can I add something about that, please? Sure. Yeah, uh, sometimes the kids have the cameras on, but everybody is on with the camera, microphone, and the internet is not able to handle it, that much information. So sometimes the teacher is, you know what, guys? You need to turn off the camera because we're not gonna be able to do the work if everybody has the camera on. So that has to be something that I see once in a while happen, they have the cameras on and the teacher has, you know what guys, uh, every, everything is going on at the same time, not enough uh, internet for all, let's uh, close the cameras and then they, the teacher presents and everything works better. Thank so you. So I guess a limitation could be also the internet, not that big for everything at the same time. Thank you very much. Good work. Ms. Sheena, iPhone. Hi, good, good, after, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak. Um, and first and foremost, I really want to say I have, I have a sixth grader at Dominguez and a second grader at Dominguez. And uh, the school has been amazing at um, transparency, information, um, I've, I've never had an issue uh, with reaching any of the teachers or any of the staff. Um, so I just wanted to start off by saying that. But um, I know that the district is restricted in a lot of ways um, as to reopening and following the governor's orders. Um, but I think I find myself in a unique situation and I, I hope that I'm not the only one because sometimes it feels pretty lonely, but um, I'm a single parent. I'm, I don't have any family. I don't have any support in that, in that way. Thankfully, I have a great school that provides that support. However, um, I'm a working parent. I, I'm, 
I was deemed mission critical as I work for the Department of Behavioral Health. And in my position, um, we, we're mission critical. We haven't stopped working. We have not worked, um, we haven't closed whatsoever. And so um, in that regard, I have to work full time. Um, uh, teleworking is, is limited for me in my position supporting the assistant director for behavioral health. And um, so with this distance learning model, I had to become quite creative as to how I was going to get my both my children learning um, without me present. And um, it's been quite a challenge. You know, my sixth grader, he's got it kind of covered. He has a great teacher, but this is essentially split up our family because we all live together. Um, unfortunately, my older son had to go to dad's house because grandparents are there during the day. Um, and so I'm, I'm not there when he's doing his distance learning. I check in, um, but it's different. So my younger son, he's going to daycare. So it's, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around um, understanding, following the regulations that the governors put forth. Trust me, I know I work with all of that in behavioral health, um, but then yet we have daycares open for working parents. And so my son is currently attending daycare where there's 30 students. There's 10 students to each aide that are helping with distance learning. And that's, I had to do that that way because the grandparents can't help the second grader with homework. They are not monitoring whether or not he gets on. So I had to come up with an alternative solution to make sure that my second grader was getting what he needed. So now he's still in a, a he's still in daycare. Essentially he's still in school all day. Um, I find it difficult that um, he also, he has different things he needs to do in the day. I mean, he's seven. I'm not there to monitor him. Um, I can't do that until I get home. We get home at six o'clock at night. And then from that point, I have to make dinner. I have to get on, see what he's done with his homework, help him. Um, you know, everything I'm sure everyone else is doing. Um, and again, I really hope I'm not the only one with this struggle. Um, you know, I don't really have the support um, other than my older son staying at his dad's. It's really me doing it all. And um, it, it, it concerns me that we're going to stay on oh, an gosh. online I'm getting to my question. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to use this forum because I thought that we would have other parents that were understanding and willing to listen as I've listened to everyone else. The question would be um, that I wanted to know if there's a timeline as to how long we'll be doing distance learning, what resources will be provided to working parents who aren't, aren't able to stay at home with their children and help them distance learn. I'll take that. Um, Chinay, thank you for sharing. I, I, you know, I was a single parent for a really long time, but we weren't in distance learning. So I can only imagine um, what your world is like. So what I can share right now is as a district, um, and, and you sound like you've been, you know, your work requires you to be very um, aware of what's going on from our governor um, and even the, the transmission rates in the San Bernardino County, but for all, all the other parents as well. Um, right now, we're, we, so we have four phases of um, movement towards returning to full in-person instruction. First phase is what we're in, it's distance learning for all. Um, we must stay in that phase until first and foremost, the county comes off of the monitoring list that the governor has put out. Um, and we come up with, the county can come off the list when we have 14 consecutive days of um, a significant drop in positive rates of COVID countywide. Then from there, um, we, we will look at what is happening locally in San Bernardino um, city unified boundaries. Because what we do know when we looked at the data before the governor even said that our county needs to shut down is locally, our numbers were much higher than um, surrounding districts or districts that are, you know, because the county is so incredibly large. So we are very, um, we're monitoring the data regularly. If you um, ever watch our board meetings or have a chance to take a look at them, and again, you're in the county, so you probably are monitoring this data too. You know that um, we're sharing this data with our school board. What our board is committed to is returning, starting to return students back into what we're calling phase two, which is um, we're calling distance learning plus, 
but they'll only do that when it's deemed safe to do so. So that, that means that our transmission rates have dropped um, to a certain number. I'll let Mr. Petir fill in that exact number in a minute, Mr. Petir. Um, but enough that we know that we can keep our students and our staff safe and um, and in collaboration with County Public Health. So we they are the ones who monitor that or they provide the data to us. When we can move into phase two, then that's our time where it's, um, where we start to bring in small groups of students, um, five to seven perhaps per class. The school will work on what that looks like specifically. And it'll be our, our needier students, the students maybe that have not been logging in or the students who um, maybe have higher um, academic needs. Um, but that doesn't mean that it wouldn't, it, it could very well include like parents like yourself who are trying to figure out how do I juggle all of this. So I don't want you to think that you might not be in that mix. We're going to allow our schools to figure that out because um, we want it to be based on their local context. What happens at Dominguez is not the same that needs to happen at Monterey, for example. Then if we continue to keep the rates down in our school district area, then we would move into phase three, which would be um, our blended learning model or hybrid, where we would have half the students in our school at a, at a time and the other half in distance learning. Whenever we move into phase two or phase three, we will always offer for the families who want extended distance learning, we'll give that option as well, because there are some families that are not going to feel comfortable sending their children um, in. And then finally, of course, our goal is to get all students in a regular learning um, in-person environment. So that's where we're at. Um, I, I heard your second part of the question, which is, well, how can child care can these these child care centers can be open and schools cannot? And so, Eric, you correct Mr. Vitier, our, our safety officer. They're under different, um, somewhat regulations, if you will, the child care providers than school districts. I'm accurate in that statement, correct? Yeah, you are accurate that the, the child care centers are not under the same. Um, uh, mandates that a pre-K through 12 or even university systems fall under. Um, so it's it's kind of a catch-22 where you've got some child care centers that have more children in them maybe than we might have in classrooms. So. so I hope I answered your question. It's probably not the answer you were looking for, um, but we have been very thoughtful um, about how do we keep our students and our staff safe and healthy and still provide um, High quality learning and experiences for our kids and not um, kill our parents as you're trying to juggle everything that's going on. So um, we'll, we'll just keep, you know, as we know, it's a it's truly a collective effort. The more that in, as our community and in the community of San Bernardino that we practice the social distancing, we practice the use of facial coverings when we're out and we practice the hand washing, that starts to change the transmission rates. And once we can beat it, you know, but everybody has to do it because if we're not all doing it, then we, we, we saw we bent the curve, it went down and then it shot back up, right? Because um, not sure, but we would think that possibly people got a little, um, we thought it was done and we weren't done. So um, with that, I'll stop speaking. Thank you for your questions. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Esmeralda, do we have any questions in the chat? Yes. Um, I do have one from Cepeda family. Are the standards for a passing grade going to be the same as if the kids were in school? If so, what are your plans to help them meet that goal through distance learning? I believe we answered that one um, oh, and can? it was from the Cepeda family out loud. Okay. Thank you. And we, I, we don't care if it's there. Scarlett Juarez. <laughs> Hi. Selena, can you make sure, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you make sure everybody is on mute? Yes. Um, and then Scarlett, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. Hi, I'm Scarlett. Um, I go to Cajon High School and I'm an ICUC leader. And um, so my question was, as a school district, are you providing a space for students to advocate about our own experiences with distant learning? And if so, is there any plan in motion um, for a conversation that's already student-centered? So Scarlett, I'll, I'll take this question. Um, 
thank you for being on with us. Um, we we want to hear from our students, and so this is your forum too. Um, we're glad that you're here sharing that information with us tonight and asking you know that request. Um, we have our um, student advisory group that um, we will start to pull back into into action, and you can be guaranteed that we will be having um, that topic um, addressed for our students. We we want to hear from from you all with relationship to what you're experiencing because tonight you're we're hearing from parents which is you know a, a very important perspective um but especially it's I, it sounds like you're probably a high school student um you can very well inform us of what your experience has been so we we will um we are committed to that to hearing from our students um and i don't have the dates as far as when we will have our first student advisory meeting but that information will be shared um, across all of our our um, high schools for sure um, so that we can begin that dialogue with our students thank you for that question thank you so much zach and toya okay. good evening thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, speak up about uh, how we're feeling about things or whatever the issues are uh, one of the comments that I had, my wife had some as well. Uh, the physical and the online books don't seem to be matching 100%. If they are, then I'm having difficulty navigating the clunky menu uh, in order to find the proper information. There's not always places to put answers uh, in the in the ebook. Uh, and the other thing was the instructions not being provided on how to get to assignments. Uh, I don't know how many different grades are dealing with the student independent weekly activities kind of lists. But if you look at some of these, which they're now backwards, <laughs> it, it gives things like, uh, like Monday, it says introduction, different kinds of families, but it doesn't list the chapter. It doesn't list um, what tab that might be under. And some of these things are extremely difficult and frustrating to find after a long day of work. Um, the other thing too is Clever Logon. Because our daughter is a second grader, having the Clever, Clever basically connects them to the McGraw. It connects them to their social studies. It connects them to everything. And so on there, you have the option to click um, keep sign in, but we click that every time and it never keeps her signed in. So there's several times that she'll say like, mommy, I need help. And I have to go over and sign her back in for it because she has her password down, but the email is so long. She, yeah, she has me laughing about that one, sorry. But the emails are so long that she can only do the password and not the actual email for the login for herself. And then the last thing is there is there a way that maybe possibly that there's a quick guide for parents and the books for instance they're in the books is telling us online to highlight it's telling us to make notes but then there's nowhere on there that we know like firsthand how to figure out how to get there and we just found out today after having it for three weeks how to highlight the book and we think we're kind of technologically savvy so for the fact that we can't do it it's kind of like if there's a possibility you guys can give us that kind of resource so we can easily help our younger kids, that'd be really appreciated. I'm sorry, can I chime Thank in you. on that? Uh, sure, you know, can we ask you to just hang hang on for one second so that way we can get an answer? Um, Tasha, will you respond to um, the pieces around the um, instructional materials, please? I'm sorry, I just don't want us to lose track um, of the question. Sure. Um, I, I can speak to the instructional material. So um, is it, I heard you saying in the beginning that the actual textbook wasn't, doesn't seem to be lining up to the, the work that I want to make sure I heard that correctly. The e-text and the physical copy of the book don't seem either they don't line up a hundred percent as far as like the page orders or um, um, page which information orders. is covered under what. Or the issue is that the e-text is so clunky, the navigational uh, aspect of it, that it's difficult to find the pages in the books that she's supposed to be working on or vice versa, because there's not always a place to put an answer in the e-text. Oh, so basically, okay. we're using online and the physical book to complete mm. the, the work instead of one or the other. OK. And is the teacher assigning it through the e-book or the text? textbook um, or both? Both. So for language arts and math, it's um, in the book physically. 
spelling sittings online, and then social studies and science is all e-text. So we've tried to use the book for social studies and um, clicking on it, like we, we clicked on it and we just couldn't find it. Like no matter what, there, we scrolled through all the pages and we had to actually have her do the assignment online and then do the rest of the assignment in the book because it was missing a couple of pages. Oh, okay, so here's what I can do. Um, Latoya, if you if we could connect and then that way I can specifically because sometimes our publishers um, are able to provide us more detailed updates. And so maybe there's an update that I'm not um, exactly aware of at this point in time. And then that way I can support the teacher and you as well and make sure that you have the res the proper resource and they can give me a little more insight with that one and I can investigate that. And just on, an, on a similar note, I can work with Ms. Doizan um, to make sure that maybe if there's a possibility for the publishers to offer a workshop for the parents and teach the parents how to navigate the eBooks, that would be a good idea as well to support. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. We will do that. Thank you. Um, Yoli, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, um, I was just ask, wondering on um, for the attendance, because I know I saw that you guys are going to have, uh, like I believe on August 26, another um, meeting for that. But um, going forward with what's going on now, since a lot of parents uh, had also been giving feedback on them, on them getting calls from the district, um, in regards to the kids' absences, whether or not the teachers are taking role at a certain um, manner. Um, I was emailed, I emailed certain teachers because they told me to have them forward it to the attendance office, which I went through a lot of process just to get it fixed. Um, and some had gave me a feedback stating that they don't really take roll call. Um, they go about it in a different manner, like if they uh, pop up on the Zoom wait um, time frame that they have, they start adding as in like they're attending the class. So by the time they're done already taking attendance, some kids are really uh, either logging in still or, you know, at, at, the, at the time still trying to figure out with the tools that they have on the new tablets on how to, you know, unmute themselves or how to make sure that, you know, they are logged as attendee. Um, and so I've gotten a few feedbacks from a few teachers and I was just wondering, um, one, I know that um, from hearing earlier, uh, they don't need to show their um, face, but they have to be on mute so they can hear them say that they're here um, just because of privacy reasons for every family. I, res I, I understand uh, how you guys are respecting that in that manner. Um, however, uh, since they're taking role like that, uh, is that one of the ways they're okay by doing that, like on the waiting Zoom? Anybody? Sorry, you only have to um, think about that one and understand. So during the Zoom, they're taking the attendance. Um, can you repeat the question part? Well, clear. one of the <laughs> teachers stated that they don't um, that they don't take role like in a matter of calling the kids names. So then that kind of threw me off because they just go by whoever they see attending the Zoom when they start the class. So therefore, if they don't see them there, either even when they're doing classwork and they're submitting their work, they're uh, taking them in as uh, attendees. So my question was, it, since they're not forced to have to, you know, show their, like making sure that, um, whether they're in the kitchen or I'm in the background, I'm not trying to be a distraction. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure that they're logging in. I see them logging in. It's just that I want to make sure the teachers are, that they're not getting marked absent. There you go. 
Oh, okay. So they're, they're, uh, if your child logs in, that means that um, they should be marked present. You're correct on that. So thank you for bringing this question to us. Um, if they accidentally, because mistakes definitely happen, you know, teachers, teachers will make mistakes from time to time. If it happens where they're marked absent, you will get a phone call the following day. If that happens, no worries. Um, we are able to correct attendance. So you just got to call the teacher or email them and let them know, hey, I think my child was marked absent yesterday on accident. He or she participated, just kind of remind them. Um, they will go in and fix and fix the error. Um, yeah, so just let us know if there's an error that might happen, we will fix that for you. Okay, and then so is it also helpful for them to like rename their photo on their Zoom so they could see their full name that they're actually on there? That does help if they have their first and last name. That way we make sure that your child gets more present. That is helpful. And like, for example, since I'm in this meeting, as an example, um, can they chat? So that way, not that, because um, I know some kids are shy, but like whether or not um, they're having to also participate in whatever, uh, every, any activity that's going on throughout the classroom time, um, can they chat them saying, um, just in case you, I didn't I hear you. If, can they chat with the teacher while in class, letting them know uh, just a, a fast message saying, I'm still, I'm here, I just want to make sure you mark me here. And then they get a reply, so that way it's acknowledged that they're actual, that they weren't missed at any time or point. Because yeah, like you said, sometimes they make mistakes. Yeah, it helps during the last, you know, I would put it a hello to the teacher, if I'm here, the kind of thing, That's that's not a bad thing to do. Um, and I do know some teachers do require them to write in the chat and then they can go back and double check attendance as well. Um, there are some on, on some of the Google Meets, it does take attendance for them. I don't know that it's always um, always functioning, but, but some of them do it that way as well. So it will show that they logged in. Okay, and then um, is there also a Remind app on that? Is it only on Meet or is it on Google Classroom too? The remind so app. The remind app is a diff. Is it a uh, and someone can maybe help me out. Um, and you you log you opt into it to get the messages from remind. I'm not Michelle can definitely speak to that. Yeah, remind is an app that the teachers will have and the parents will have the option to download the app, but you won't have to because it's it's going to use the information and the phone numbers that we have on file through our ARIES student information system to contact you. So the very first time that you hear from one of your teachers in the Remind app, you will probably get a text message to that number and then it'll prompt you with the option to download the app um, and then you'll appear in uh, your child's class. Um, we did also um, open up the option for our teachers to integrate their Google Classrooms, uh, their Google Meet and Zoom with Remind. So they will be able to send you uh, Google Classroom links and Google Meet links and Zoom links in the Remind app. So we're, tr we're trying to make sure that everything is coordinated and that you're able to get the information um, in different ways. Okay, I appreciate um all you guys' feedback. Um, also, with the, with that being said, is there also a way where a parent can be an add-on to the Google class in case they're having trouble for a particular class? There is an add guardian feature that is part of our Google Classroom um, suite. We don't typically add um, directly in as a student because that's a different uh, view, but as a parent, you are able to add yourself as a guardian to Google Classroom. And I think our uh, director of IT has a link that he can put in the chat, which can will give you a little bit more information about what that would look like. Is that applied only for high school or also middle school? That applies for all of the Google Classrooms. Okay, great. Um, and then I just, you know, like, um, 
I'm just grateful that you guys are being very um, proactive on trying to get feedback, not just from the parents as well as the children, but as well as the um, just the the teachers. That way, um, you know, they're not, the children don't feel like they're being cheated from their education, and then the parents don't feel like you know it's an additional um, stress having to, you know, no, no one wants to, you know, have to keep an eye on every single class. And, you know, it's kind of tedious and the teacher themselves, you know, having to go through the whole entire process, of course. Absolutely. Thank you, um, Yoli, for bringing your, your questions and just being here. Um, it really helps us as well. So thank you so much for being willing to speak up. We really appreciate that. Okay, thank you. We have a question in the chat. Uh, it's from Liliana Valenzuela. What is the plan for supporting special education students with instructional materials to learn at home? Dr. Landy or Ms. Gutierrez? Oh, Esmeralda. Uh, exactamente la pregunta era de qué manera se van a identificar los materiales que se enviarán a casa a los estudiantes. Fue una pregunta que hice en la mañana, pero me gustaría que aprovechando que está mi Nereida, volviera a contestar. Ok, uh, Ms. Nereida. Sí, yo estoy. Ok. Ok, voy a contestar en español, Liliana, era de acerca de materiales. Por ejemplo, cuando abrimos una IP y se pide específicamente materiales que están alignados con la instrucción, eso es una discusión que se hace en el IP. Si es necesario que se deben de um, pedir materiales para ayudar en la instrucción que se le está dando al estudiante, en ese momento es cuando se pone esa, ese adicional material en el IP. Entonces, esto es separado de, de las cajas de sensoría o materiales de instrucción que es en general para todos. Si un padre está pidiendo algo específicamente para su niño en, en, para poder apoyar en el formato de, en que se está conduciendo la instrucción, esa es una plática que se debe de hablar en el IEP. Y si es necesario ordenar um, materiales adicionales, se hace a través del IEP. So what Liliana was referring to was not specific to the sensory materials that we're going to be sending out in general to everyone. She was asking specific materials, additional um, materials that can assist a student to um, apply in the instruction of the IEP. And this is something that has to be discussed in each student's IEP in collaboration with the teachers and the parents. If it, if it is an accommodation of additional materials that need to be added, then that is something that we need to discuss on an individual basis for parents. So that is something that is possible, but it has to be according to the individual needs of the students within the IEP. Espero que pude contestar tu respuesta, Liliana. I have ICU guests with their hand raised. Uh, yes. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Romero from ICUC. And I got, um, I got, um, I know, I know that you start. Uh, that is is doing a, a lot of great job right now. So we are better and better um every time. Yes, I wanna know um why the teachers need uh, need to use a lot of uh apps for the kids because uh sometimes they are working in Google Class and different um apps and um at the same time, they needed um, work and the phone and the computer. <laughs> and what we can do for that, uh, for um, we, uh, for we can have another one program uh, we can use for them for, I don't know, I know I'm, uh, I appreciate that teachers, they are doing a great job too. And they are learning, we are learning too. It's hard for everybody. But uh, what is the possibility uh, to get uh, not too many 
not too much um, applications. <laughs> so, um, Ms. Romero, um, I, will, I will take your question. So you're saying um, when teachers are providing the, the curriculum, uh, they are using just not just the Google, class, Google Classroom, but also several apps. Is that what you're saying? So it has, uh, the, the students have a lot of things to juggle between. Is that what I understand correct? Okay, um, I, you're muted. I can't hear you, Ms. Romero, you're muted. You're on mute. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes they need to use another, uh, you know, a uh, tablet or a phone because they need to uh, use um, the application that the teacher is uh, doing. For example, um, I have a parents of the third grade and they need to use seven uh, apps. Oh. And I say, oh my God, <laughs> this is a lot. It's hard, it's hard, um, it's hard, you know, uh, work online, but uh, with that seven up, it's like more difficult. So what we can do uh, for uh, work better than that? So um, I'm not sure whether this was prevalent across the district for us to send like a, you know, a, a email a district wide. But if you can actually reach us, uh, I'm not I, I'm not sure whether you're talking about a student in um, elementary or secondary. Um, of course, you can all be and uh, we will be able to help you with uh, reaching out to that particular principal and support you with that. Uh, in making sure like what exactly, because again, the curriculum and the planning, um, the teacher has um, the rights to it uh, on how they want to deliver instruction. But then if it is going to impede the children learning, we can definitely um, look into it further. Okay, so please, I will, um, I will actually list my email ID here. You can reach out to me and then we will go from there. I would like to comment something as a parent about that, something that I see. Maybe that can help her because I know this, I know that, yes, she's, uh, they are using different apps. There's, for example, one called Prodigy that looks like a, a lot like a game, but they are learning math. So that's just math, math, multiplication, addition, um, all that kind of stuff, fraction. So that app is for math. Now, when they are looking something totally different, that's when they go to the other one. And it's gonna be really difficult to put everything in just one app. That, I don't know if you, if you know what I mean, because sometimes I'm sitting there with a the kid and I'm at the beginning it was like, I kind of got surprised because it looks just like a game and he's sitting there, he can be there half an hour, he doesn't mind, and he's learning math. I know that, I saw the numbers, he, I can see the mind going, adding and everything, the fractions, that's prodigy. Yeah, for the other uh, stuff that he needs to learn, he goes to the other apps. I believe there is no, right now I don't, believe there is a way that we can do everything just one it's just it's just a suggestion maybe on the future we can now uh, you know i know it's not um i um uh, that's why i uh, the, when i started talking i know that the district is uh, doing a better and better but i just a uh, suggestion for the future maybe we can look for something like that um i don't um it may be not for one application, but about a list that they have right now. And, and, and you know what? Once the kids going, they are growing up and they are going to different, the next school that have, instead of having just one teacher, they have like five or seven because they are in middle school. That's gonna be the same, having different apps. It's like having a different classroom for each everything for for a different material science that's one class math is one another class is history is another class that, that's how i see it 
I know, I know, I know for uh, middle school and high school, they have a lot of, uh, you know, classes. But uh, um, I'm talking about um, elementary too. I know. Because, because um, uh, it's hard for the parents, you know, um, we work uh, with a lot of parents and uh, one of the th uh, one of the things they told us is, is uh, why they needed a lot of uh, apps. So they started um, learn with Zoom or learn with the, uh, um, you know, the easy uh, apps. But uh, I know, I understand they need them for books, for, uh, for different things. But uh, in the future, just I want to uh, uh, suggest that it's a just recommendation. It's not like a big, uh, big problem. <laughs> this is yeah. and I wanted to address this question. I just wanted to mention that you absolutely are correct. The teachers do need to get used to using these different apps. But for instance, in the case of English learners, they do have certain translation apps. They have applications that provide things in their own languages. Um, they have applications that give more support, more pictures, more videos. So you are correct. Sometimes it seems overwhelming, but we are really trying to provide access to all of our students. And it's gonna be a matter of the teachers just using them, the kids getting used to them. And of course, as Ms. Beatrice Gonzalez said, us providing tutorials for the parents on how to use them as well. So we're three weeks in and I'm very proud of the work that everybody has done and so proud of our patient parents that are here with us today. But I know that as we go on, we're gonna get better at using the apps and determining which ones are crucial and which ones are not. So thank you very much for your insight. That gives us very good. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, hearing me. And uh, that's what I'm telling you. Thank you for, because uh, when we started with the uh, classes online and and right now we are better, believe me, we are better. My my um, my kids, they are happy uh, because they are, uh, you know, uh, online all the time. But uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, the other parents too. You know, we work in the community, so that's why um, I'm here uh, for the other parents. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, I have Galaxy Tab that's been raising her hand. She wants to go ahead and ask her question. Galaxy Tab A. Okay, um, Yoli has her hand raised again. Do you want to go ahead and ask your question, Yoli? Okay, I just unmuted. So um, just uh, going in regards to the tutoring, I know it's kind of limited to what you guys have to offer, but for more difficult subjects, acid, like chemistry and math, um, for high schoolers and then also for middle schoolers, what do you guys have for them available other than the A K O uh, M A U N I T I Center dot org? Um, Julie, I can take the question. Um, have you reached out? Um, have you reached out to your school and uh, the teachers and the principals uh, on the availability of any extra support first? Um, I didn't address that issue yet because it didn't come up only because of this absent thing that I have to go to every single class and you know it's just it's kind of it's not just for one child it, it, this is even applying to the other child so can you imagine having to go to 14 classes just to see whether or not and then getting everything cleared uh, so it's a lot of time consuming um, but I did notice that uh, my child um, I try to uh, advise them on what I can do for them, but it's not the same. I know that um, having a teacher in front of them when they're answering questions, because some kids are kind of timid on asking, even in class or whether it be online, um, it's just the embarrassment. I don't know. It's, it's always been like a child thing, I guess, um, adolescent thing. But um, my point is, is that I'm trying to see what I can figure out with you guys now that I have you in a platform um, if I can just note down um, or if you guys can type back to me and let me know where other places they can go into um, getting that help. So call like, me. Uh, 
so I'll put one or two websites here. And also, uh, Yoli, please reach out to um, the school. And uh, because especially you, you're saying chemistry, uh, it, it's not like a general tutoring session that everybody is knowledgeable about, like uh, the depth of chemistry. Sometimes the students have to, you know, um, you have to learn and understand. It requires some kind of specialization from the person that teaches and tutors them. So first reach out and I've already put my um, email uh, ID here. And if you're not getting any help and um, you, you just email me and I will be able to take it from there. Thank and I you. See what resources I can find for you. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yoli. Torres. Claudia. Okay, Claudia. Go ahead, Claudia. Oh, sí, mira, buenas oh, tardes. Sorry, I'm oh, here for us. Yo soy mamá de Matthew, él está en la Rayleigh, aquí en San Bernardino. Yo solo pido tener más comunicación con la maestra porque yo trabajo tiempo completo y no estoy 100% enfocada ahorita en su trabajo. Y no quisiera que perdiera el año escolar por alguna razón. This mother, this is Maria Garcia from Communications. I'm going to be doing the translating for this mother. Um, she's asking if there is any way that she can have increased communication with the teacher. She's a working uh, parent uh, and she hopes that uh, she can communicate with the teacher um, so that this year is not lost for her son. Hi, hi, Maria. Um, if she, because I don't want her to have to sh share the personal information, I will put my contact information in the chat if she wants to reach out to me so that I can um, find out more information and maybe help connect her with the principal and the principal then can help with um, connections with, with the teacher. Uh, señora, dice la doctora Pérez que si por favor este nos puede, ella, ella va a da, dar su, su correo electrónico para que usted le pueda mandar más información sin tener que compartir cosas que a lo mejor son personales. Um, y la doctora Pérez le va a ayudar a hacer contacto con el director o la directora del, de la escuela. Muchísimas sí, gracias. Um, gracias. Hi, I'm Torres. I didn't get to, yes, I, I, please go. Even, I couldn't Thank unmute myself. I'm sorry about um, that. Go yes, my question is, uh, yes, my question is, um, for, um, for my son is in high school and with all this COVID just, uh, we, you know, just got back in March in the spring, um, he was being mainstreamed and, um, at the time when he was mainstreamed, he had like a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, now when we went, uh, with the COVID, um, I was doing the one-on-one. -on -one. I found myself doing that. Uh, now that we just started school distance learning, I'm still having to be his one-on-one -on -one. and it's a 24 hour seven thing that I'm doing right now where I'm doing what his one-on-one -on -one probably would be doing with him at his mainstream classes. What or how or, or what's being done to support that one-on-one -on -one that they're not getting um, because of the distance learning? I'm sorry, um, either Dr. Lundy or Dr. or um, Ms. Gutierrez, are you available to answer that? Dr. Monares? Oh. This is Nereida, I'm sorry. I had, I got frozen on the chat for some reason. Um, can you repeat the question I can answer? Okay. Um, sorry. Since you mentioned that those who need, um, I guess, more support, um, they would, um, I guess, address them 
at an IEP oh, yes. um, individually. Now, yes. back in the spring, I didn't know what was being done or how, you know, how to uh, work that. Um, and due to that, he failed one of his classes. Um, I was being his one-on-one. -on -one. And now that I thought, well, maybe this is going to be over before we know it. We're going to go back to school and you know, we're doing distance learning. So now I find myself being his one-on-one -on -one and it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, he's got three classes and his um, vocational and I'm like working more than anything you know, because I have to um, help him process. It's it's hard for him to process it sometimes and I have to break it down for him, show him and then having to navigate, you know, like somebody else said, another parent uh, opening tabs here and there and, you know, getting a sketch and, and writing the notes and just doing all of that, that's, that's everything that I wasn't doing <laughs> for yes. my son, or he wasn't even aware of how to do it. And now I'm having to do it with him. So mm -hmm. I want to know what support or how is it, um, how are you addressing this uh, for th those who have that one-on-one -on -one or who we're having it at school and now with distance learning, how, we do, what are we working in okay. other words towards so, um, so I know, that support? Okay. So I know you, I, I'm sorry you're going through this right now and I can't imagine, but I, I do know that towards the end of last year with COVID, we, we started holding the IEPs remotely and we were providing services remotely. What we're currently doing now is if you're requesting an IEP, we're asking you to um, request the IEP with your teacher. And so what we're going to start doing is as we start opening IEPs, we're going to discuss supports individually. And when we're talking about one-to-one -one supports, because, because of the COVID and for us not being able to bring back staff, we're not able to give that one-to-one -one support. And we understand that many of these supports could be instructional. It could be behavior. So we are working with our staff and getting them trained and getting them access so that if it, once we get them access and train and working with the teachers, we could provide support in academics or giving supports in terms of um, be not so much behavior, but engagement at home. So we are working on a plan, but this, is, this all has to be discussed on an individual basis. And so when it comes to one-to-one -to -one supports, even for parents, we are gonna be, begin our workshops for parents and how to give support remotely with IEPs and what services look like. And we're gonna begin our workshops on September 10th. And so I want to invite you to um, participate in these workshops via Zoom, because this will give you more information on how to support your children at home right now with um, us holding and giving services remotely. Um, I hope I was able to answer your, your question. Okay. Okay, we have a question on the chat and it's from Valerie Morgan. Uh, her question is, are the teachers required to have their camera on? We are in week three and our sixth grader hasn't seen her teacher yet. Having the teacher on the screen will help the students stay more engaged. Good evening, this is Marcus Funches, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. And, and earlier we talked about the, uh, our scholars having their cameras on and some of the sensitivity around that. What we do, we encourage our educators to be visible. We encourage them to make sure that they're making a wonderful connections with the scholars that they teach and making sure that they're building relationships. And part of that is that camera piece. Um, so. I will just start by saying that is definitely encouraged and a big part of what we like to do. Now for that particular uh, instance, I would encourage that parent maybe to make, uh, um, reach out to the school site leadership so that they can get a call back and 
and talk through that. Um, and if, 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 if you can't get any, or if that uh, conversation between you and that site leader um, uh, is, uh, needs to go a little bit further, I'm sure that uh, they'd be willing to uh, talk you through that. So start there and um, see what kind of uh, uh, information you can retrieve, but we do encourage our educators to uh, be visible and, and, and build those relationships with students. Okay, thank you. We also have um, a question on the chat and it says, I have an enrollment question. I'm a social worker and trying to assist a family that recently had their children return to them enroll their children. Enrolling online is difficult because some to the some to the information that's needed, I don't have and you are not allowed to move forward. Is there so is there someone who can help the biological parent bypass the red tape and get the children in school? Yes. Uh, this is Leonard Buckner, assistant director over enrollment and placement. Um, I put my uh, phone or my email uh, in the chat uh, for that person to email me uh, the student, who the student is and get the name of the parent. Um, and we work collaboratively with our Atlas program to, and so that we can get uh, students enrolled immediately. So if, if they contact me, then uh, we can uh, get that student going. Thank you. Selena, do we have anybody? Yes, Ms. Tanisha Ware. Ms. Tanisha Ware, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, I have two um, first graders. They're six years old. And I think that the current distance learning, um, even though well, I don't want to say that it's better than nothing. I, I mean, I know that it's a work in progress, but the schedule is um, a little bit difficult for them. You know, they're 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 six, so their attention span is not you know an hour and fifteen minutes long. Even if they were sitting here watching a movie or playing their favorite game, they wouldn't do it for an hour and fifteen minutes. So there are small breaks in the very first part of their morning, but they're expected to be on from like ten fifteen until noon. And that's just a lot. So I wondered, I wondered if there was a way to modify their schedule to have a little bit longer breaks earlier in the day before they go to lunch um, so that it's not such a struggle. Hi, this is um, Tasha Doizan. So I, I would um, most certainly reach out. Have you communicated with the, the teacher ab about this? Yes, I spoke with her and her, her concern was the number of minutes that the children were supposed to be taught. So I guess, you know, there's obviously a limit for their age and their grade, but I'm not talking about the overall minutes. I'm just talking about the number of minutes at any one particular time. So I realized that it would push them further into the day, but I would prefer that they went further into the day if they were actually able to be involved and conscious and participating in the earlier part of the day. Okay, sure. Um, is it, uh, let me um, reach out to you on the side so I can get that information so that I might help you um, facilitate that with the teacher and the administrator. Would that be all right? Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Cesar Marin. César Marina. Sí, buenas noches. Buenas noches. Este, de antemano les agradezco mucho a todo el distrito el esfuerzo y el gran trabajo que están haciendo. Uh, tengo una curiosidad, una pregunta. ¿Qué está pasando con los, con los muchachos que van y, y dan horas a las escuelas? ¿Sería posible que ellos 
a, de alguna manera pudieran apoyar a nuestros hijos a, después del, del horario de escuela, por medio de la misma aplicación que se usa en la escuela? This is Maria Garcia translating, um, interpreting, I'm sorry. I hope I captured this correctly. What is go going on with the young people who give their hours to the school? I'm wondering if they can be used for student support through the same app as distance learning. I hope I caught that correctly. I had a hard time hearing the gentleman. Can we ask a clarifying question related to, um, I heard you say the young people, who, I, I want to better understand so we, we know who to best have answer this question. Señor, ¿nos puede explicar este qué, qué eh, refiere cuando dice de Mi pregunta era si ellos horas? de alguna manera podían apoyar ellos a nuestros hijos. ¿Quién son ellos, de, señor? Del, del horario de escuela, a apoyarlos a nuestros hijos con, con las tareas. Y si el distrito les, les, uh, les apoyaría también a ellos uh, contándoles sus horas. I'm still not getting, um, I'm still not clear on who they is. He's, he's saying, can they um, support our children with homework and also get credit for their hours? Um, señor, ¿nos puede clarificar quién, quién, quién son ellos? Está hablando de horas de servicio comunitario. Solo para clarificar. No serían los, uh, los maestros, uh, los sí, a eso estudiantes me internos. Oh, los internos. He's talking about interns, Maria. Disculpe, es que no entendíamos, no, no estábamos claros en lo que estaba tratando de decir. Muchas so, gracias. So he's referring to college interns. Disculpen, eh, una, disculpen mi atrevimiento, eh, César. La pregunta era sí, a los si, sus hijos, interinos. si sus hijos, los interinos pueden ayudar a sus hijos para, para las clases. Eso es lo que quiere decir. Tiene que decir bien su pregunta para que le den una respuesta eh, bien clara, por favor. Gracias, César. He's asking about interns and if there's a way that interns. Right. Could yes, support. thank you. I mm -hmm. think uh, Dr. Funches is going to help address yeah. that. So we, we appreciate that question and thank you for your concern with our, our using our student interns who are a important part or integral part of, of our community and what we do for students. Um, so I'll answer it like this right now. Um, our focus is on making sure that we support the teachers and the instructional aides and get them uh, very familiar with and acclimated to and comfortable with distance learning and teaching in a virtual environment. And then maybe uh, long term or down the road, we might be able to take a look at how our student interns might uh, support that. That's just not where we are right now. Um, that would add uh, another piece that we're just not ready for right now in this process. But we do hear you about the uh, tutoring that might be needed or the extra intervention. Uh, so please be patient with us as we I work with our teachers and instructional staff right now. And then maybe down the road, we can take a look at those student interns and how they might be able to support what we're doing. So we thank you for that, that uh, idea. We thank you for that thought. Um, and that's something that we might consider uh, moving forward, but just not at this particular time. Thank you. El señor, el doctor Marcus Funches, um, el líder de los recursos humanos, dice que en este momento la prioridad son los empleados permanentes y darles apoyo a esos empleados. Pero Muchas puede ser gracias. Que gracias por el gran esfuerzo que están haciendo todos. Sus sugerencias. And Dr. Funches, he just said thank you very much. Thank you for all you're doing. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I have Elizabeth Hernandez. Yes, I have a question. I have a three-year-old that needs um, speech therapy. Uh, he doesn't qualify anymore uh, for the, the learning centers because he's about to turn three next month. So I already been through this process with my other um, kids. 
uh, with everything that's going on, um, where can I take him? Where can I, what can I do for him to get his speech therapy through the through the um, district? Who do I call? Where do I go? I don't know. I just say <laughs> hi. Um, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't quite hear you. Are you are you saying that he has speech services? You want to know where to get them from, or? Um, yes, he's he's gonna be through. So he definitely qualifies for the um, learning center. He has to go through the school now. Okay. So, um, where do I call? Where do I take him for him to get his therapy? Um. So I'm going to I'm going to put my um, email in the chat so you can email me. But um, we the the coordinator's name is Trent. Um, Trent Rowell, but I'll make sure that you connect with him. So I'm going to put an email here and I will give you all the information for how to connect to, to the speech ther therapist. So even if he doesn't um, have it in the IEP, um, we are still giving services to those students who are transitioning from three to four because we're not able to do assessments, but we're still offering yeah. services. So um, okay. if, if you put your, or if you can put your email in the chat and then I can email you everything that you need. Okay, uh, I do it now. Yes, so I'm, I, I, yes, please. Okay. Okay, we have a question from Monique Villegas. Monique, you can go ahead and. Okay, hi, yes, um, you know, I had a question on the scheduling. Do the parents have an input on scheduling? Like for a time, you know, for the school hours? Hello? Well, well good evening. Uh, Sorry. That's, uh, that's another good question. So okay. the process, I'll explain it this way, and thank you for that question. Uh, the process or processes that were used to create school schedules uh, were done collaboratively between school site administrators and the teachers teacher leaders and leadership team and educators on campus. And one of the things, one of our expectations is if a parent has uh, a need uh, for flexibility in that, in that schedule, just to reach out to the school site administrator, um, I won't say that, you know, a whole schedule could be changed, but you could reach out and talk about your needs and they might be able to accommodate uh, uh, something for you. Uh, but the scheduling is created collaboratively between the school at, school site administrator and the teaching staff. But you are able to voice your concerns and share your perspectives and see if there's any room for flexibility to meet your needs. Okay. Yeah, I was just concerned because I have a sixth grader and his hours are, um, they're different from his um, brother, which is my other son. He's a second grader and sure. my sixth grader, he only does the two hours, which is required. My other child, my second grader, he goes from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. with a 10 minute break in between that and a 30 minute lunch. And, you know, it's just not, it's, it's just not, um, you know, it's, it's just not okay for him. It's not, he's not able to just sit there and stare at the screen for so long, you know, without, it's not enough breaks in between. And, and I have got, I have spoken with uh, the principal and the teacher and they both tell me, well, I think, uh, I told them it's, I said, I, I believe it's 120 minutes uh, for a second grader to be on screen time live. And they told me no, that they didn't know where I was getting my numbers from and, uh, it was 240 minutes. So I, you know, they had, they haven't changed anything and it's just really hard for him to, to just sit there. Uh, and, and a lot of the kids, I could see them online and they're squirming around They're you know, they're either they're on their little phones or they're watching TV or, you know, it's just too much for a child to sit there for an hour and 40 minutes and stare at the, you know, the teacher and the teacher expects to get full attention. It's, it's ridiculous. So, so I will say this, so screen time uh, can be a concern and a challenge for, for our, our young scholars. So I understand that. What, what I like to do 
uh, I'll put a number for you to call me in, in, in the chat and then we can talk about that and see what next steps might be, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I just, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt this, Melinda. No, I just sorry. want to clarify that the presentation today, the PowerPoint that has all the information, which includes instructional minutes, is going to be put on our website for you to access as well. So you'll have all the links to all the resources. So that that hopefully is a tool for you as well. Go ahead, Esmeralda, sorry. Okay, that's fine. We have a question from Elizabeth Lindsay. She said, my nephew is in kindergarten. He has synchronous instruction for 60 minutes and a, a day, Monday to Thursday, and no synchronous instruction on Friday. Is that the correct number of synchronous minutes for kindergarten? Dr. Funches or Tasha, do you want to ad address that? Yeah, I wanted, uh, sorry about that. Can you repeat those uh, uh, minutes for me so that I can weigh in? So he has, okay, her nephew is in kindergarten. He yes. has synchronous instruction for 60 minutes a day, Monday to Thursday, and no synchronous instruction on Friday. Is that the correct number of synchronous minutes for kindergarten? So a uh, great question, trying to do that math there and, and make sure that I provide uh, a good answer for you. So I, I, will, I will say this. So a school site trying to get the instructional minutes in uh, per day and per week, they have some flexibility with uh, getting the total number of minutes in and, and having the, the perfect amount of screen time for our, our kindergarten um, students. And so with the kindergarten schedule, uh, there's 180 daily minutes of total instruction that should take place with 90 minutes per day for the teacher. That's the teacher's time um, to get all that instruction in. So that 90 minutes per teacher, hopefully it do, do, if you need to translate, just let me know. Um, that's for teacher, but we know that our kindergarten students may not be able to stay on that entire 90 minutes. So that educator might have to break that time up between those kindergarten students. And so depending on their level of, of, of engagement to stay engaged during that time. So without a lot of context of that current site or, or that classroom of students, um, I don't want to say anything about that teacher and her instruct or his instructional minutes without knowing the full context. So what I'd like to do too is ask you to connect uh, with uh, me and, and, and I'm putting my number here in the chat so that we can talk and get further context about that uh, because a teacher's ability or a teacher's decision making for his or her students would depend on uh, the amount of time that students can uh, be in front of the screen on live instruction, uh, especially at the kindergarten level. Okay, thank you. We do have uh, Melida Janis. Melida, go ahead. Oh, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Amelida Yanez. Good evening, everybody. My name is Amelida Yanez. And I have different questions that through the meeting, um, uh, some of them has been already um, responded. Muchas preguntas que he tenido en, en, esta, en esta junta, varias ya han sido um, respondidas. Pero hay una que, que, que no me gustó la respuesta y me gustaría saber. There's one that I didn't like the answer, but I would like to know. The kids uh, don't have to be in the camera when they are in classroom. And um, I don't remember who said, uh, we, you guys said, and I put it in the chat, you guys said, we encourage the teacher to be in the camera. Pusieron, dijeron, nosotros le decimos a los maestros que tienen que poner la cámara. But encourage, the word encourage is like, it's not mandatory, right? 
la palabra les decimos no es como mandatorio. If the teachers are not mandatory to be in the camera, uh, if they are the teachers and they're not mandatory to be in the camera, how can I tell my kid, hey, you have to be in the camera, you have to put the camera when you are in the classroom. Si el maestro no lo está haciendo, entonces, ¿por qué yo le tengo que decir a mi hijo que él tiene que estar en la cámara? Para mí, como mamá, tengo cinco niños en, en la high school ahorita. Dos en el nueve, dos en el once y uno en el diez. I have, I have five kids in high school right now. Two in ninth grade, two in eleven, and one in ten. I would like to know that uh, why is it not mandatory for the kids to be in camera and why it's not mandatory for the teachers to not be in camera? Because I have a question about that now. And I'm sorry, I'm like just throwing those questions up to you guys, but I want to be, you know, exactly on my question at this moment. Disculpe. My husband came today and he told me, hey, you are really involved in the school, so I would like to know why teachers are getting the camera, giving classes to, to the kids without shirts. And I was like, what? What do you say? What are you saying? So me dijo mi esposo hoy que vino, hey, tú que estás bien eh, involucrada en la escuela, ¿por qué hay maestros que están dando clases sin camisa para estos niños? So if the teachers are not, um, are not mandatory to be in the classroom, but some of them, I'm in, in, in the, sorry, in the camera. And these teachers who are in the camera are not being, no están siendo profesionales, they're not being professionals. Uh, what do we have to do now? For me as a parent, para mí como un padre, I would like to, a mí me gustaría que los niños estuvieran en cámara, that my kids were in camera when they're in class. Because there's many kids that they just, just put to listen. Hay muchos niños que nada más ponen para escucharlo, mas no están en la clase. Uh, there's a lot of kids that put it just to listen, but they're not in class. So... I hope you understand my question. And if not, I give you my phone number so we can talk and we'll get together to talk about this. Thank you very much. I appreciate the passion. I appreciate um, uh, your your concern and, and, and your passion behind it. It's no problem. So I'll try to address two things that you stated. Number one, just uh, teacher behavior uh, that you, so we, we hold our teachers to high expectations and high standards um, for the teaching profession. So if there was to be any uh, inappropriate behavior, we'd love for you to let us know about that or, or talk with the school site administrator about that, who uh, I'm sure would reach out to us and we can properly take care of that. In terms of the educator being encouraged uh, to be on camera, yeah, that's it right now. We are incur highly encouraging and, and asking our, our, our educators to be on screen and, and talk with their scholars and, and build relationships. I think right now too, if, as we go through, this is the third week of school, um, we are learning how to properly uh, educate our scholars online and, and operate in distance learning. So some of that is some uh, learning to be comfortable on camera throughout the day and learning how to uh, 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 build relationships when you're right, when you're not in front of students, but you're in a camera setting. So I, I would think, and as we work through these issues over time, we'd get to where we want to be with the cameras, we'd get to where we want to be with the teachers and students and such. And, and, and to, to your point about the uh, students as well, uh, we are working on different backgrounds to give the students who might not be comfortable with showing um, uh, their home. And we are asking students to um, uh, uh, show themselves and, and read and, and, and be on camera when, uh, when, when learning. Uh, but like I said, uh, some of it will take time for our scholars to be comfortable with that. Um, so we want, we want to give them that time, uh, but we'll get there. Uh, your concerns are important to me. Um, I'd love to speak with you. Um, I hope that answers your questions for right now, but I did put a number and an email in the, in the uh, chat. So I thank you for your passion. I thank you for your questions as well. And uh, we want to do what's best for our scholars and, and get better.
So thank you. Thank you. We have a question on the- Thank you for the answer. Um, we have a comment and a question in the chat um, from Teresa. Teresa, she has um, a son who teaches from 8 to 3 p.m. and only one of his parents is complaining, but he's frustrated because many students has a lot of trouble with the internet service. How the district can help or support these families? Anybody for um, internet problems? I'm wondering if Mike is still. Yes. Okay, there you are. Thank you. Uh, th thank you for the question, Teresa. Um, I would ask that you can contact uh, me and we can follow up with you. Uh, we are providing hotspots and devices to our students, and we may just need to swap out your devices and see if that would uh, have a better performance, depending on how old your device is currently at. And so uh, please contact me. I'll put my email as well as phone number in the chat. And we'd like to follow up with you. Thank you. I also have a question from Denise. Michael, I would like to know how long is a junior high teacher mandated to be on live per day? My son meets with three teachers a day and have had a few instances where the teacher does not go live and just has them fill out what's called an exit ticket. My son loses out on learning for the day. I do not feel like this is okay. Uh, I thought I got to that one, but um, I, I just re, uh, I answered it again in the chat. So I'll, I'll, I'll go you. back to it. Thank you for that. Thank you for the follow-up. So the middle school grades four through 12, uh, our educators are required to provide 120 minutes per day. That's per teacher. So that teacher should be on live instruction for 120 minutes. And then it's determined at the school site how those minutes or the schedules will work out uh, because a, a student may not get, for a middle school teacher, he has to serve, he or she has to serve um, several class periods. So the 120 minutes are for the educator, or for the teacher. And that might look differently uh, per day, um, per student. So. It's so 120 minutes for that educator. And, and for your, uh, the part that you're concerned about in terms of an exit ticket per day, I would uh, recommend uh, a phone call or a, a reach out to that site principal just to talk through your concerns and see what the expectations are and the scheduling at that site. Hope that answers your question. Thank you. So it looks like a lot of the questions and comments have been answered in the chat um, or were related to the professionalism of the camera and the teachers. Um, does anybody else have any other question that they'd like to um, ask out loud? Please remember to raise your hand. Um, you can use your camera to raise your hand or you can use the reactions at the bottom if you have any additional questions. One more, are the middle school students getting books from S. Stearns? I can take that. Um, most of the middle school uh, textbooks are available um, online. So they can actually access their te textbooks through their Google Classrooms. They are all in the electronic format. Thank you. I have Valerie Morgan with her hand raised. Uh, yeah, we keep mentioning site lead. Is the site lead the principal or is that someone else? That is the principal. I apologize. We get into our lingo. Yeah. That's, for, you know, our lingo in education. So I, thank you for asking that. And I, I apologize. We It happens so easily. So yes, if we're talking about site leaders. That's the school site principal. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Perez, for clearing Dr. that Perez, up. Dr. Perez, uh, we do, for years, uh, almost 20 years, we've been calling 
uh, our site cap site leaders, site oh, leads, you're caps, right. Site leads, <laughs> right? Um, and we've called them site leads because we didn't want to call them site coordinators because we didn't want to confuse coordinators uh, with, uh, with site leads. So we apologize for that. We'll we'll start saying <laughs> caps site lead, right? But when we refer to site leaders, we refer to them as principals. So if Thank I say you, Dennis. So sorry for that. We will. Um, if we do want to make the distinction, though. Yes. Thank you, Dennis, for for sorry. that reminder as well. Yeah. <laughs> We're there to support the site leaders, <laughs> and and our students. I have one more quick thing for uh, Dr. Funches, um, and I don't mean to be the dead horse here. I know we've addressed it already um, in terms of the teachers on camera, and I guess my question is why is it strongly encouraged and not mandated at this point? Is this a legal issue or is this a, um, you know, privacy issue with the teachers or what, why is it only strongly encouraged at this point? Thank you, sir. Uh, not beating a dead horse. It's, it's something that we need some clarity around. So um, with anything new, you know, when, when the school closures happened and when, the, when we had to go to distance learning, uh, with anything new, uh, the district and and uh, teachers unions work through uh, situations and, and, and negotiations and and challenges. And right now, uh, as we're getting acclimated to everything that that's new, um, we we were on uh, strongly encouraged at this time um, as we work out the kinks and the bugs. So uh, we're still in the process of working through all that, and we want to do what's best for our scholars. So that's where we are right now. Um, in the newness of all this, um, in the coming weeks and months, um, you'll see uh, some changes and some uh, uh, getting there, uh, some things that you're looking for. So we'll leave it at that for right now. And thank you for your question, sir. Okay. Um, how will the district handle teacher absences? Are online substitutes ready for this? From Catalina Castile. Another excellent question that we've been uh, uh, working at for quite some time, um, and, and I'll I'll answer it in two ways. Uh, at the school sites right now, teacher absences have been taken care of very effectively by our school site administrators uh, with on-site staff such as program facilitators. I know there have been counselors that filled in, some resident guest teachers or resident substitute teachers that. The school sites have trained to uh, take those classes because they know the uh, the procedures and and structures of the uh, school site and what the teachers' preferences are, uh, even in the online platforms like Google Classroom and Zoom. Uh, from a district standpoint, uh, we have been training our substitute teacher workforce on Google Meets and the other online. Uh, platforms that go along with our in our, our distance learning uh, platforms or distance learning uh, at this time. And so to, to be clear, will they be ready? Uh, we're still in the process of training them, uh, working out the bugs with our teachers. We know that the distance learning virtual in the virtual setting or teaching instruction in the virtual setting hasn't been always a, a cakewalk. It's, it's been a lot of learning. And so our guest teachers and substitute teachers will also experience some challenges. So right now we are training them. Uh, we are helping them to get acclimated to what a distance learning looks like. And we feel like in time they'll be there. But right now we are, we are encouraging our, our administrators and working with our site leaders to fill those absences with prepared staff already. And then eventually, our substitute teachers will be able to take classrooms like normal. There's a lot of training involved with that. Okay, thank you. We have Tanisha Ware. Tanisha, do you want to make your question? Tanisha? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I had I had one more question. Um, my nephew is in the sixth grade and um, his teacher has um, very specifically stated on multiple occasions that he was not allowed to wear, that my nephew was not allowed to wear earbuds, that he was not allowed to be seen eating or drinking. 
and that, um, you know, he must always be sitting up straight, which I realize is just, you know, sort of teacher mode. But I wanted to ask if that seems like a reasonable request because the kids are at home. And so, um, you know, there are snacks and there are beverages and there are bathroom breaks. And I don't want to perpetuate this. You have to sit here still and stoic while you're being taught to. So I'll address the piece related to the earbuds. Um, something that our school board has uh, asked us to do is actually provide uh, earphones for all of our kids uh, along with, you know, uh, earphones with a mic because we know that sometimes students do need to have those things on to um, avoid the distractions. I mean, you have siblings and, you know, all kinds of things going on in the house. So um, that piece related to the ear, to the earbuds or earphone, uh, that, that is something that we're going to be providing for, for our students. So um, that definitely is an acceptable, um, you know, use of the technology for, so students can uh, be more focused. Um, as, as far as the other items that you mentioned, you know, I think um, conversations go a long way. So I would invite um, either, you know, you or another, you know, um, responsible adult for, for your nephew to speak with the teacher and um, gain some maybe understanding about why that might be um, the ask um, and have a dialogue around, you know, the, the realness of needing a break and whether that be a snack break or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that goes a long way if we keep those lines of communication open. Um, and then if, if you encounter um, something, the response, you know, maybe not what you see as reasonable, then it's again, we want to keep things as local as we possibly can um, and have that shared with the principal so that they're setting okay. some norms around the expectations of the learning environment. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. We we just have four. We have four kids in um, three different grades. Yeah. And I'm working from home one day a week. And my mom happened to move to California right before COVID did. So we've been hit pretty hard. We had to upgrade the internet. You know, we had a lot of things going on. So um, I just I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be a distraction for other kids. I don't want my kids to be a distraction for other yeah. kids because they're they're seen eating or whatever. Uh -huh. Or maybe it's just better if we turn the camera off while they um, indulge mm -hmm. in their uh, cheese and crackers. Yeah, but um, <laughs> that's yeah, understandable. I just, <laughs> I just wanted the uh, professional opinion on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miss Cecilia, you can go ahead and um, ask your question or make your comment. Yeah, hello. Something that I want to say is thank you to everyone in the district for making possible the distance learning. I'm really happy that you guys are thinking about the kids, keeping them safe at home, and at the same time, trying to provide everything for the kids so they can learn at home providing with all the equipment, hotspot, the um, laptop or whatever. So I know the system is not perfect, but I see how it's getting better day by day. Even the take, taking attendance is way better now than day one. <laughs> so yes, everything is uh, working. And I see the little one is learning. Okay, and he's kind of like a special, he's in sixth grade, but he's uh, doing the sixth grade in middle school in Chavez. So he has seven classes, six teachers. So he's kind of like middle school and at the same time elementary. But he's doing great, he's learning, maybe not as much as he will be if he's at school because the other day he told me it would be really nice, really fun, be the school and have a, a look, a, being able to grab the um, microscope and look through the microscope and see that instead of seeing, seeing it just in the screen. So there's a difference and he knows, but he's still learning and they, they're doing a great job. 
Thank you for everything to everyone. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank Erika? You. Erika? No más oh. quita el micrófono. Perdón, perdón, es que no, no encontraba cómo poner el micrófono. En esto todos Muchas estamos gracias. aprendiendo y lo comprendo. Creo que este, vamos en muy buen camino. Estamos trabajando todos juntos para poder pasar esta crisis que está sucediendo. Mis puntos importantes que creo que he comprendido, lo primero es que es opcional para el estudiante tener la cámara encendida o tenerla apagada, pero siempre y cuando ya el estudiante se haya reportado con el maestro de su asistencia. Para esto también quisiera agregar que el hecho de los, de los dispositivos que nos prestaron en ocasiones, algunos de nosotros que estamos muy agradecidos, los tenemos por los últimos cinco o seis años. En este caso quiere decir que estos uh, dispositivos necesitan ser actualizados. Si hubiera un link en que nosotros como padres podemos actualizarlos, con gusto lo hacemos. ¿Ok? Um, eso es lo muy importante, es el punto que yo, que yo he, he aprendido e entendido. También el que los maestros tengan la cámara encendida es muy importante por una gran ra razón. La razón para que el estudiante comience a tener las relaciones de confianza con el maestro. O sea, el maestro sí tiene que tener la cámara encendida la mayoría del tiempo. Y por el asunto de, del break que les dan para los estudiantes, yo me imagino que tiene que extenderlo un poquito más porque les dan 10 minutos, pero a veces no es suficiente para hacer tanto comer algo como a asistir al baño. Eh, solamente esos son mis comentarios y a todos les doy un aplauso. Y Educación Especial está haciendo lo máximo y se está esforzando lo máximo. Y en el caso de mi hija, Michelle Ramos, están trabajando juntos. Gracias. This is Maria García from Communications. I'm interpreting. No, está bien. Voy a tratar de uh, dar un resumen de lo que habló. Uh, she said kudos to special education. Um, she applauds the work of the district. She thinks that children need longer breaks. Um, sometimes it isn't enough time um, to use the restroom, grab a snack to eat. Um, she believes that the teacher should have their camera on. Um, and then she talked about um, some of the parents are very grateful for the devices that they were given years ago, some of them five to six years old. Um, so these outdated devices, she would like a link to be able to update the devices. Maria Garcia, lo estás diciendo en español. Yo lo dije en español. Sí, por eso lo estoy diciendo en inglés. Ah, perfecto. Sí. Te oigo en español. Ok. Oh, ok. Es que la señora me está, está traduciendo, pero yo acabo de decirle a, al gabinete lo que usted dijo en español. Yo se lo tradu traducí en inglés. Ahora esperamos la respuesta. Excelente. Gracias. Hi, Maria. This is Mike. Please have her reach out to me and we can make an arrangement for her to come in and swap the device. Dice a uh, el señor Mike Tu que por favor este lo contacte y que um, hacemos arreglos para que usted pueda entregar ese dispositivo que ya está, ya tiene varios años por uno más nuevo. Thank you. Gracias. Zach and Toya, did you have another question? Well, yeah, I just had a comment or um, a question about when schools do resume, can the parents have like a long um, um, heads up a couple of weeks ahead of, ahead of time? Because a lot of us have don't have childcare right now or are using different childcare than we normally would. So we can kind of get in and um, kind of get our ducks in a row before it starts. Um, and then the other question is, well, the, I know when we did that survey, we asked about how we wanted to return back to school. Are they going to use our first suggestion or will there be like a heads up that we're going to, they're going to try to implement that so we can change our minds if we want to. And then my third thing is I want to thank you guys for this forum on how you guys did this parent, um, this town hall this time. I feel like this has been the best one when it comes to parents being able to voice their opinions. We've We've participated in all of them, and I just feel like this one's been the best one 
when it comes to actually hearing our voice and getting us the opportunity to be able to see what the other parents are thinking and even being able to help each other out in the chat room when, when something's coming up. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for that. Thank you. Toya. Oh, last thing. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Backgrounds. I'm so sorry. My, um, they're like, wait a second, you forgot. Backgrounds. I know Google Meet currently doesn't have backgrounds and I know you guys might be working on getting those backgrounds. Um, and I know there's been a lot of comments about why um, kids aren't on there full time, but I want to make a comment that my daughter said today, which I want to remind, it's in the second grade. And she was like, their background, mommy, their house, like they, they should turn their house, their, their cameras to the, the window. And that's coming from a second year old. So a second grader, excuse me. So we have to kind of, I, like to me, I feel like if we can get those backgrounds, it helps us parents or who, people in the house when they've been over and they don't realize they're right in front of the camera or uh, <laughs> that's happened a couple of times or, you know, it just protects us. But then too, it helps the little kids understand and not having to worry about or being embarrassed about anything or having to be um, ashamed of anything. You know, my daughter, I talked to my daughter afterwards about it, but she was like, well, we should have backgrounds like we have on Zoom when we use it. I was like, I know, baby, we'll work. they're working on it. But I just wanted to bring that up because I know for everyone else, I think that's kind of important. So if we can get that, that'd be great. Thank you, Toya. Second graders, if we could get them to run the world, right? <laughs> we, um, I actually believe, um, and Michelle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that Google has expedited the use of backgrounds. So I think we're pretty close to being able to do that. Our school board has asked us to um, have the school label or the school logo for the backgrounds for the students. So we're working on that. So it's, it's coming and I think it'll be sooner rather than later. So that'll be um, helpful. So you had two questions. I wrote them down so I would not forget. Um, first one was, will, you, will, the, will you as parents have some, you know, forewarning of when we're going to go into phase two or phase three? And the answer is yes. Um, you would, of, of course, if you watch our school board meeting, you'll have the most updated because that's when the school board takes action to move into phase two or phase three. But even um, if you don't, because we know you're very busy parents, um, we will have, our schools will be notifying you and then we'll do our same thing where we probably um, robocall you all to death with um, phone messages from us, but we will get that information out there ahead of time because even once the school board takes um, action, we have to make sure that everybody is ready, that we've got, I mean, there's just, it's not something we can do overnight. Um, so we're, we will have, you will have time. I, I can assure you of that. Um, the second question was around, can you, the survey that went out, um, and I believe we did that, good goodness, it seems like three months ago, but I think it was probably only a month ago in July. Um, can you change your question or your response? And the answer is yes on that too. Um, we actually, as we collected the data, uh, it was a little bit more challenging than we thought in that some of the data on the paper survey, not the ones that the parents completed on our digital survey, but the paper survey, um, the data wasn't, some of the, the student ID numbers or just some information wasn't accurate. So we're going to have to get um, more detail from our families and we're gonna ask our, our, our schools to help us with that. So it'll be a joint effort. So if you decided initially that you wanted extended learning and once we get close to that, you just change your mind, there's not gonna be a problem with that. So more information coming on that, watch for that. Thank you for your questions. Okay, Dr. Perez, I don't see any more hands and it looks like most of the chat has been addressed and a lot are just comments and a lot of thank yous to um, the team for having this platform available. Thank you, Selena. So um, I, I want to thank our family engagement team for all of your stellar work both afternoon and this evening. Um, we could not have done it with all of without all of you and for the parents just so you know those are the the ladies that have been helping us with the q a um and uh yes there you go you see as esmeralda and selena um so we just deeply appreciate the whole team um and in particular the two of you tonight i want to thank um all of our team who is with us and and so dedicated to meeting the needs of our families um and families we you know really just grateful that you're here with us and that you've you know stayed the course you're it's 8 47 and some of you are probably like i thought this was going to be over but we really wanted to stay committed to answering all of the questions um and that's gonna you know that's our ongoing commitment to you um 
I don't imagine that this will be the last time that we do this type of forum um, as we get into um, more information around reopening and things like that. I, I just know that we will be doing these types of forums um, ongoing. So um, as you have questions, I think you have contact information for um, everyone. I know they've been putting it in the chat. It will also be included. Um, there's a last slide of the presentation that uh, Ms. Gonzalez mentioned would be uh, shared on the family engagement webpage. Please reach out to us. We are here and, and we know um, how challenging this, this is. Um, and we just want to continue to support you. So please keep bringing questions as you have them. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Dr. Volkmer, I don't know if you would like to make any yes, closing I, yeah, comments. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Um, families, parent, thank you so much uh, for investing this time this evening. We're so appreciative of your thoughts, your ideas, your comments, your experiences. It gives us so much insight. Um, you know, when we, when we plan a program or even when we plan a meeting like this, uh, we do it with the best of intentions, but you really, really never know how it's going to come out. It just depends on, you know, who's there and what the energy is. And this has been absolutely fantastic. This, the spirit of community, parents and families sharing. I want to compliment our district staff for being so responsive. Here's my number. Here's my email. Contact me. I'll take care of you personally. I can't thank them enough uh, for, I, I know what time they start their days. Because uh, I'm either emailing them or they're, they're emailing me. So it's been a long one today, but what a good one. And we just want to thank you. It gives us so much insight as to what you're experiencing and how we can adjust to make it better for you and better for your students. So uh, just a, a huge note of thanks to all of you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we hope that you have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Um, stay close to, to those that are you know that you love and even though sometimes we can't hug them all we can do some virtual kind of hugs or something <laughs> um, but family and friends are so important in this time and just you know have a very good evening and be well <laughs>